The Cleveland Moto Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped Lawn Mower 4.0. Alright, now we're rolling again. Alright guys, welcome to Cleveland Moto <laughs> Podcast. We're at episode episode number 330. <laughs> and the reason that was all simulated was uh, when we launched the last, uh, when we lit the last candle, we looked at the little board and the board still said 329. Yeah, go figure. I mean, it's, it's not like we have a board to tell us Fancy ass what... board to tell us what episode we're on and we're not even using it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Mm. We need a digital one. A delicious Pride of Cleveland. All oh, right, yeah, a digital one. <laughs> We're still gonna fuck it up anyway. I went into a, I went into a hotel once, and it was this real, you know, trendy hipster hotel. And when I went into yonder trendy hipster hotel, they had a sign on the wall that said how many um, Instagram likes they had, <laughs> and it was just and like, you know, I while I was standing there, I was like, so. It, it hasn't moved. I've been checking in for about the past five minutes, and that hasn't moved. And they said, oh, our manager got that, spent money on it, part of a marketing campaign. And the idea is that when you see that up on the wall, you'll be like, oh, I'm going to like them just to see if it actually works, uh. to see if it goes up. And I was like, I couldn't fucking care less. I legitimately <laughs> could not care less. Uh, watching that thing change numbers one time is not nearly as important as the $700 I just gave you to stay in your fucking, right, you right. know... <laughs> <laughs> Extra swarthy fucking what, Airbnb place or whatever it is. What really happened yeah. was that dude watched that one episode of Black Mirror where it was all about the likes. Yes, the stats. likes. Oh, yes. Yeah. And yeah. then he was like, oh, hey, I have an idea. I have an idea. It's going to be great. Well, I think it's a marketing company that does it. And it's just, again, the ways the ways people will come after you for fucking marketing. It's, I'll tell you, it's fucking cutthroat. It's unfair the way mm -hmm. they're invading our normal lives to uh, try and sell us shit. And that's uh, that brings me to Manscaped 4.0. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, uh, what? Boop, boop. You didn't see that coming? Because, <laughs> I mean, come on. That is, that's totally our jam. I mean, that's what we do. Uh, for the record, I have been using said product. Yep. Same here. Yep. Yep. I, I'm going to tell you. I'm going, I'm going to say the shit works, folks. It works. Yep. Going to say that prior to that, things had gotten a little unruly. And I'm a guy who does take care of my business. <laughs> and yeah, I'd, I'd slacked because you know why? It's fucking wintertime, man. You're not dressing up for anything. I'm married. I'm not going anywhere. Anybody's going to accidentally see me naked because in the summertime, probably going to see me naked. That's a fact. <laughs> if, they're, if we're out and there's motorcycles involved and there's, you know, fireworks and gasoline and booze. Yeah, sooner or later, somebody's getting naked. Best time to get naked. Best time yeah, to get well, naked. Well, you can burn something off of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You know what? Here's here's a little tip from your Uncle Phil. Oh. Do you know the one firework that you absolutely should not use when you're naked? Mm. Sparklers. Sparklers. Roman candle. No, I, we were, no, we. it was bottle rockets. Because, like, I do the bottle rocket thing where I light the bottle rocket while oh, I'm yeah. holding the stick. And then just, you know, just wait for the pull of the, the, the jet, you know. And when it starts pulling, I let go, you know. And off it fucks, right? And uh, and so you do. But what I realized is the one time I had done that, and I ended up with the strangest burn pattern on my abdomen. Like, I had mm -hmm. didn't realize it was even happening. Um, many, many years ago when I was in the RC world, you know, we would have our after hours fun. Yeah. And uh, I decided that if I unzip myself and put the thing, you know, the bottle rocket, and yeah. I held it there and lit it, it'd be yeah. cool. It'd be cool. And it shot out, and I was a hero, and then I was like, what is smoldering? And then I was like, ah! And so I didn't need a manscaper no, for a while. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had been to some parties where some girls had bent over to try to launch oh, things yeah. or yeah, do Roman yeah, candles yeah. out of things and stuff. And I got to say, end result is... Remember, folks, just like an RPG, ensure the back blast area is clear yeah. before you go launching anything, <laughs> any fucking where. And sulfur smell lasts a long time. It lasts time. weeks, man. Yes. Yeah. I love my, the smell of sulfur. Yeah, but my junk smelled like burnt <laughs> eggs for a while, red right? <laughs> eggs for a minute. The, hey, uh, baby, what's your opinion of deviled eggs? <laughs> <laughs> before this goes any further, I have to let you know there was a bit of a fireworks incident because you're going to see and smell some things I can't explain. <laughs> and if I don't tell you this right now, it's gonna it's gonna break your mind. How the? But if you like it, I got something for you. <laughs> Why does this dick smell like gunpowder? <laughs> so Come instead on. of using fireworks, maybe you should use products from Manscaped. Exactly. Oh there my you go. God. Steve came around. You know I never will. <laughs> 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 Yes, that's right. Support, support for Cleveland Motors brought to you by Manscaped, who's the best in men's below the waist grooming champions of the world. 
Manscaped offers precision engineering tool. I'm sorry, precision engineer tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer. We all have them, except for Steve. He gave his back. The Lawnmower 4.0. And we're going to do some kind of funky thing to give Steve's away to somebody. Mm-hmm. So one of our podcast it, listeners is going to. It was not it. used. It was, so it's, it's in pristine condition <laughs> and never used and never even opened and gonna, never even taken. So I, was, I, was gonna, I don't want you to think that I'm like <laughs> using something and then giving it to somebody. It <laughs> might be worth it. more if Steve uses yes, it. Yeah, it will have yes. Lebanese yes. DNA on it. Yep. You can clone him, right? Yeah. I was just thinking we should have people send in pictures why they need it, and then I said, "No, that's no, that's no. the worst no. idea. No. no, come on, that's they're going to do that anyway." Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. So it's Lawnmower 4.0. So they're on their fourth version of this thing. That's right, 4.0. Join over two million men worldwide and these guys who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. They're giving legit twenty percent off. But here's the kicker, 20% off, but free worldwide shipping. Now, if you are our, our listener that we have in uh, Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, Kazakhstan. Yep. And, yep. And that, those guys too. Those guys should all take advantage of that just for the free worldwide shipping. So uh, remember, the code is Cleveland Moto. Cleveland Moto will appear down there somewhere. And Cleveland Moto is all one word, uh, all one word, no, uh, no ne- unnecessary spaces, mm-hmm. at Manscaped. Dot com. That's manscaped.com. And I also heard that version 4.0 yes. has reduced fatalities by 50%. It has. <laughs> it, 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 it has. Oh, no. I'm going to tell you straight away. The people dying of testicular bleed out has gone way down. Yeah. Um, I ran this thing. I did. A, I ran it contrary to the instructions, and I was just like, well, let's see what happens if you gave it to an idiot. It's really hard to hurt yourself with this yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I also took it commando, like, yeah. no protection. Right. Well, it just ran. Kind of, that it. sounded kind of weird, but yeah, I used it just as is. Yeah, yeah. It's it's remarkably safe. Oh yeah. yeah and John's been safe. shaving his gerbils with it too. <laughs> <laughs> and the battery lasts for fucking ever, dude. The battery does I not seem to ever. I still fully charge it because it says don't like overcharge it. Right. Just, yeah. It, battery maintenance. Yeah. Well, and I it's haven't got charged cord- it yet, and it's got cordless charging. Yeah, yeah. Which is very yeah. cool. Inductive, yeah. yeah. Inductive charging on it, which is super badass. And it does work on the USB C, which is everything on the planet. Yep. You know, which is nice. So, you know, if you don't if you don't need the plug to charge up your lawnmower, you can use the plug to charge up well, any other device. That's what I found out. Yeah. So like in the morning, I'm always like, fuck, I forgot to charge my phone. Yeah. So I'm in the bathroom taking a shower and I'm like, oh, the manscape thing. I just plug my phone yeah. in and unplug it. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Good to go. So Plus not only is camera. it. What's that? Plus, it's got a camera. Plus, it's got oh a camera God. right in your bathroom. It's got a mic- <laughs> macro camera. Well, of course, it's 5G. It's set up. It's, it's already uploaded that shit to YouTube. Yeah. Actually, that would be PubeTube. Uh, <laughs> 4.0. 4.0. The PubeTube 4.0. Brought to you from Manscaped. Now, hold on. We got we to gotta say that that is copyrighted by Cleveland Moto Podcast. Yeah. If they would yes. like to use that, yeah. we need another yes. conversation. We'll have to have another conversation. Well, you can well, use Before PubeTube. we release the, the, this audio and video, we should actually get the website for the- Right. Yes, absolutely. If you don't think that exists already, though. Oh, yeah, (laughs) for sure. (laughs) Now you're checking it. Yeah. The uh, (laughs) things happen, things, thing, weird things happen to um, your websites when you don't keep track of them. When you don't watch your uh, websites, shit gets weird and it gets weird really quick for, you know, for ages, our shop was called pride of Cleveland, right? Right, right. Pride of Cleveland. It wasn't like it, it was just pride of Cleveland. A lot of our gear still says pride of Cleveland on it. No big deal. Uh-oh. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you that if you look up the screen, you're going to find out what happened to pride of Cleveland because I did lose track of it. Um, I, I quit updating it. Oh boy. Hey, look at that. Demonetized. No, I'll cover it up. Yeah, you don't have to. I mean, it's so small. <laughs> they can't see anything. But yes, for sure, Pride of Cleveland, you guys at home, www.prideofcleveland.com, ain't us anymore. A customer let us know that it wasn't us anymore. And it's in Coventry, England. Mm. So if you want to hire a personal escort, as they like to say, there are heaps of reasons to hire an escort in Coventry. And then all that copy. So like all that. I can only think of one. Yeah, there's really only, there's really only one reason. It ain't going to be going out to the fucking opera. No. Yeah, that ain't the reason I need an escort. When you need yeah. a companion to yeah. listen to your needs. I love it where they're just like, um, it's quite common for escorts to be considered in the same light as prostitutes, but not at all true. Escorts offer so much more than prostitutes as they have the ability to adapt to all sorts of situations. For example, you'll never be faced with the sort of issues Richard Gere experienced with Julia Roberts in the film Pretty Woman because our Coventry experts 
are consummate professionals. In other words, don't worry about them falling in love with you, Mr. Richard Gere. Right. And for these women that are very versatile in all these different situations and are not just there to have sex with you, I'd like to tell you that the only image on their goddamn website, the only image on their website shows <laughs> Snatch. Yeah, naked people. They're like, for somebody who's a professional yeah. operation, Oscar, look real quick. For somebody who's a professional operation, they certainly are not hiding the fact that <laughs> these women are ready to go. And no mention of men, no mention of like we're equal opportunity for whoever you might be or whatever you want to have. No, Pride of Cleveland is coming at you straight, hard and fast. We are there with women you can have sex with. Yeah. Disgusting. Which corner is it? <laughs> exactly. Right. And what I think is hilarious is they're just saying these women aren't necessarily prostitutes. They're escorts. So they weren't dressed for any sort of escort duty I'm aware of. No. They didn't have a safety vest on. <laughs> they didn't have any flags. No. They weren't carrying a gun. They weren't carrying a gun. <laughs> exactly. None of the above. They're only the only type of escorting they're doing mm -hmm, is my cock into their vajajaja. <laughs> yeah. That's all they're doing. So, so since you're bringing up fetishes, <laughs> yeah. this, but this is not, it's actually taking it more of a cleaner area, but. Oh, wait, so, wait. I, I just read this. Okay. Hold that thought because that's important. I was just reading further down and it says just some of the most typical services offered by our escorts include weekend theater and sightseeing breaks with clients in the UK and overseas, attending <laughs> VIP events such as Royal Ascot or gala dinners, meals and activities with regular clients based in Coventry and throughout the Midlands area. Are they going to wear their work clothes? Because so. they can't wear those outfits to any of those places. Those <laughs> outfits are only rated for one damn place. And, and that is seating for one, two tops. Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah. and by the way, don't Google pube tube. <laughs> don't, Google, don't Google pube tube. <laughs> don't. All right. It does exist, and there's a hashtag for it. So it's oh, a there is. Really? <laughs> okay, all right. So, so yeah, so we're not going to Google pube tube. No. All right. So, but it does exist. Out of nowhere, <laughs> out of nowhere, I don't know how this happened, but I went down a rabbit hole. Oh, my hole. God. Yes, it does. All right. <laughs> okay. so, I'm blurring it. I'm blurring it. I'll be blurry. Oh, my God. Can, make, can we make it go away? All right. But back to... I, I found a new fetish that I didn't know existed, and it seems like we all need to get in it on the opposite way. So, okay. right, I found this. There's a whole video Vice did, and it's called Financial Domination, where right, this... these dudes find a girl on the internet. They never meet. The girls don't do anything for them except for look hot. Then they go, I need $10,000. And the guy goes, okay, and sends it to him. And all they get in return is a video of the girl spending the money. Wow. So you're talking about, like, marriage. I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. But, but no, but <laughs> long distance marriage. Right. It's but that's it. Financial domination. That's it. And like, right. and the one guy that they said, he was like, yeah, she goes, she has access to all my accounts. I don't know. She takes yeah, money when she wants. Just, wow. Just, yeah, wow. And this dude, this dude was wealthy. I mean, like, he had, he bought himself a farm mm. to live on and retire. Like, yeah. he, like, all this stuff. And, like, just take my money. Don't care. Well, there you have it. So that's what I want to flip that though. Yeah. You know, just yeah. find some beastly you woman. Need a sugar mama. That's what you Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. who wouldn't want that? I was going to say, <laughs> all of this. If my job is only spending somebody else's money, yeah. that's the only criteria. Yeah. Is yeah. you have to be willing to give me all of your money. Yep. Right. Um, we, we, I've only found a couple of people like that. I call them customers. Hey. <laughs> hey. The, uh, we, we, we have snake had jazz. <laughs> snake jazz. Exactly. <laughs> So uh, you guys remember um, a few months ago or a few weeks ago, we were talking about um, Brandon Fa, right? Mm -hmm. um, who who did you know? Who, who's a pa he's a Patreon of ours, right? Yep. And we I think we might have accidentally slaughtered his name a little bit, and he was talking about you know John chomping on sausages, <laughs> and John's not here to defend himself. So yeah, we're we're throwing him under the bus on yes, that he one. Does. Um, he says he owns a Honda Trail one uh, twenty five that is number two ninety three. He said, yes, the VIN number thing is uh, a thing in the CT125 <laughs> community. Um, so apparently we have to look and see what VIN number yeah. I own because I, I, I bought this. I think it might be on the other side. Maybe you can see it. What, what number is it? Da, 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 da. Well, it's the last three numbers. Last three? Yeah. Eight nine nine, but the nines look like they're hand carved. <laughs> the nines oh, look geez. like they're hand carved. Okay, so you've got number two ninety three, and I've got number eight hundred ninety nine. So uh, Brandon, you beat the shit out of me. Yours is much <laughs> earlier than mine is. Um, you're going to see in front of you if you're watching this. You're going to see a way too loaded up Honda Trail one twenty five, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the thing that happened this week. So you know, last week we talked about me getting the Super Cub, and then uh, from the same guy that I got the Super Cub from. 
uh, he took this and treated it like it was a fucking Christmas tree yeah. and added everything you could add from the Trail 125 dressification catalog. If you can break a light on this, you yeah. are a talented individual. Oh, it would be very hard to break a light anywhere on that. He has that, he has armored the living shit out of that bike. Um, extraordinarily well armored. So anyway, he did write us back and he says, hey, oh. my last name, however, spelled the same as the delis- delicious noodle soup. Uh-huh. is not pronounced the same. Which I had today. Uh, it was so good. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. Pronounced more like fo, F-O-U. Oh, okay. He okay. said kind of how like how rappers or Southern people say the number four. Fo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> also. Excellent description, my friend. Absolutely. Also, fun history fact. Did you know the noodle soup dish fa or fo is a product of Vietnam being a French colony. It's a hybrid of sorts between French onion soup and traditional Chinese noodle soup. Thanks to old white guys going places <laughs> they shouldn't have. Now we have delicious noodles. Well, at least we did something good. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And, and we also have anal for the exact same reason. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yep. Anyways, motorcycle question about my 2017 Wii Strom. I bought the bike in 2020 with 400 miles on it. 400 miles, completely stock minus a GV windshield. The first 1,000 road miles I put on it, and I I always remembered, man, this bike is so smooth. Prior to this, I had only ridden dirt bikes and a DRZ uh, 400 Super uh, Motard, 6,000 road miles. Then I spent a day farcolating it. Shinko, big blocks, T-Rex crash bars, pannier racks, off-road handguards, serrated foot pegs. I went on my first off-road adventure and screwed the bike into the ground several (laughs) times. (laughs) On the way home, I noticed the bike was a little vibey. Mm -hmm. I figured maybe the big block tires, but I was too tired to care. Now I'm at 6,000 miles and would really like a way to address this vibration. It's mainly in the handlebars. It happens in sixth gear between 62 and 68 miles per hour. If I'm above or below that speed, it goes away. I've read sometimes that crash bars do act as tuning forks. I was wondering if you guys have any suggestions to remedy this. With the hand guards on, I had to remove the bar weight ends. I've read about people filling the handlebars or crash bars with BBs to act as a dampener. But I am very weary about trusting what people on the internet have done. Mm -hmm. Are you weary about what assholes on podcasts say? (laughs) Because you should be. I'll I'll, I'll say this. This is my this is my thought. Um, Anytime you drop a bigger bike on dirt, you're not really damaging it. Like, I mean, well, I mean, depending but it sounds like you just kind of tipped over or something like that. Um, but a lot of times the weight of the bike will twist your triple trees and your forks just a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to be dog tracking a little bit or something. They're just not right. Um, so you can probably loosen the triple trees, kind of mess yep. with it a little bit and try to straighten them out and see if that helps. A good technique I think that we've always used is just loosen all the bolts on the triples and just let things find their home again. You know, like because if anything's been tweaked and even jamming on your brakes really hard, there's a lot of force there. There's a lot of inertia there. And yeah, we've seen front forks get twisted, even though there was no impact, Mm -hmm. so to speak. So Mm -hmm. loosen everything up, let it find its natural home, tighten everything down again, and then go out and try again. I know that you're thinking like, oh, well, I took the bar end weights off. Look, we've been doing this for a long time. Almost every company that sells you a ridiculously big top case will tell you like, oh, you should put bar end weights on if you put this big top case on, because what's happening is the top case is getting in the dirty air behind your body and creating the bike to kind of want to walk offline a little bit. And then because the bike is covered in gyroscopes, there's two big ones I can think of, um, the bike wants to go back online again, right? So what happens is you get this this wobble, this little Still, oscillation. Yeah. And if you've ever ridden a Kawasaki KLR 650 at anything over 75 miles an hour, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And this will happen. And that's just the bike coming offline and going back on again, which is what you described. Mm-hmm. Because if there's something tweaked a little bit, what's going to happen is it's going to go offline, come back online. And it's going to happen hundreds of times a minute. And so I don't think that adding, you know, hey, you know, my bike wasn't handling exactly perfect. So what'd you do? I made it heavier. And well, when did you stop? Well, it's an 18 wheeler now. You know, I I filled everything with mercury and, you know, drying cement in my handlebar. Yes, exactly. Right. So this whole thing's. Well, he was saying that it's a, it sounds like the resonance. Yeah. Not a wobble. Like, I mean, I, there's, to me, there's like a difference between when you have like your, wobble. yeah, you have weight in the back, and then mm-hmm. your your handlebars want to like wander a little bit. That's like a really low speed 
wobble or res. I mean, it's a resonance, I guess, but it's you, it's low speed. He, I think he's talking more of a buzz, maybe. Right, well, you yeah. just reminded and, me of something on the Husky that you took from right. me. Okay, when um I originally put some wheels on it, my buddy Mike actually helped me with this because I was losing my mind. I'd be riding and I'd get on the highway. It would be yeah. fine all the way up to like sixty miles an hour, and then it'd go. Drrr, it would like not vibrate, but enough that it was bothering me. Mm-hmm. And what had happened was um, over the winter, my tire had gone down. I inflated it a little bit more, yeah. and the bead, it didn't come out, but it moved like a millimeter yeah. on one part of the tire, right. just enough to cause vibration up around five, 6,000. Had a high spot on your tire Yeah, as and a so, result of the bead not being where it was right. supposed to be. Right, and it, yeah. wasn't, it wasn't even noticed. Like, you right. really had to take your finger and kind of find it, but yep. then when we, we let the air out of the tire, we pushed it back in, re- yeah. reinflated it, unbelievably gone. Like, it was just gone. And that's mm. true. So if it's a, if it's a oscillation, a handlebar oscillation manifested like this, like you're trying to help out two friends at the same time. And uh, if you're doing that, right? They call that cross-country skiing. Is that the cross-country skiing? <laughs> I know if you're in the backseat no, of a car, a, that's the downhill skier. Yeah, what's the yeah, Eiffel yeah. Tower then? I forgot. It. That's a, yeah, that's oh, a, yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah, yeah, that's a good game. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, that's the Eiffel Tower. Uh, but yeah, they both involve three friends, yes. but uh, all of them do. But however, this particular one, uh, if exactly. So if it's an oscillation, sure. And But if it's a vibration, da, 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 like kind of that thing, then yeah, look at your tires look at all this stuff you've got shinko big blocks on there so you know there's uh probably some additional weight and so if they aren't seated if the beads aren't seated really nice remember there's inner tubes in there too right, right? so there's all kinds of stuff the shinkos are great tires but they're not known for being balanced 100 percent. i wouldn't the say they're laser beam accurate no no. Well, no but another thing too is that if the tires are any size a little mm-hmm. bit different yep then maybe he if they're slightly smaller yep then maybe he never was cruising at that rpm at that rpm before yep. and so now the, these tires are slightly oh, different so cruising great. at that rpm you know what the engine has a resonance at same that speed different gear yeah, right so if it goes get out of sixth oh. gear get into fifth gear do the exact same speed is See the resonance the identical That's a good you, one. you've got it narrowed down to 62 to 68 miles per hour why not try that in a different gear because you know that bike will safely go that speed in fifth gear so yeah, do it, and then see if everything changes. Yeah. If everything's exactly the same, right, well, then you can go, okay, well, then maybe that's not just a resonance with a motor or harmonics or something like that, because I've had motorcycles that just had a funky harmonic that was just at a swing arm speed, harmonic. Yeah, yeah, at a certain speed, it would just be weird. But pull in the clutch at 68 and see what happens. I, I mean, know it's going to happen. You slow down, but, slow I down. Mean, yeah. but does the vibration immediately drop out? Right. If it's that's from the motor point. or from yeah. the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's an excellent point, too. Good, good, uh, yeah, good all around. I like that one. Yeah. So so there's that. So that's pretty cool. The uh, is, uh, It's hilarious all the mail we're getting from people who are versus, right? Versus mm. enthusiasts. Oh. Um, yeah, because that's fucking cool. That's a good the, uh, uh, Eric says, take my $10. I wear <laughs> headphones all day at work, and half the time they're only a prop to discourage others from speaking to me. <laughs> yeah, well done. That's fucking brilliant. I need yeah, to pick yeah. that up. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, can't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> really, you're just mouthing about you like fuck you. Yeah. Is it if they do? I just nod my head to a non-existent beat, and I completely ignore them. <laughs> uh, perfect. Yeah, I like this dude. Yeah. He said recently I started listening to Yins, and I've been able to legit ignore them. And I get a chuckle or two on occasion, and that's worth a ten spot, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah support yeah. your local, yeah, support your local podcast. Seriously, I've learned a ton of small and large shit that's already helped in my pursuit of more go fast. I started on a CB 500T. Phil's favorite. No, i fucking, he's being funny, but I have to say again, fuck that bike. I fucking hate that bike. CB 500 T, you know, our buddy, uh, there was a, a buddy named Chris. He did the podcast with us ages ago. He came in, he had his cool beard, his really nice, like groomed biker beard. Like, like he's like a modern chopper curator enthusiast. Right. And he came in and he had that, and he has a really nice cut denim jacket, all perfectly weathered to look like he'd got them at like the biker thrift store. And he, I noticed he was at the DGR the other day and he came up and I was like, Oh, Oh, you're not riding a CB 500 T. Are you now? Mm-hmm. No, cause the crankshaft cracked in half. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he was like, yeah, I couldn't keep that, but I couldn't keep that bike running. I was like, Oh, oh okay. All right. Plus it had a brown seat. Right. Yeah. There you go. Are we being invaded? Oh, we're being invaded by John Mackle. Fresh, 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 fresh. That's good. Ooh, we have a look at his outfit. Well, Six. hold on. I, I'm yeah. this. That's all right. I'll stop and start because I can't turn the record around. And what do you do? Oh, you're going to try it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you can't fine. just turn him on. No. All right. Fine. That's just, fine. Yeah. Yeah. 
You're going to do what? You're going to you're going to pause us? Yeah, just oh, for, yeah? just okay. a second. We're going to pause and we'll right pause and we'll be right back in a second, but there'll be somebody else sitting there. Yep. Stand by. One hour later. <laughs> it's rolling. Camera's check, rolling. Check, check. Are we good? And uh, yeah, and we have a new edition. Yes, we do. So uh, since we last talked, so we were right in the middle <laughs> of our email from awesome Eric Cork. And uh, Cork is a Patreon member, but this is a big thing. He's like, he, he calls us out literally and says, I've learned a ton of small and large shit that's already helped me in, in my pursuit of more go fast. I started on a CB500T, Phil's favorite. We all know how much I fucking hate CB500Ts. Yeah. He caffeated out five years ago. The bug bit me hard, and I've been through another CB450 solely for the motor because eh, 500T. So, yeah, that's smart. That's a smart move is to put a CB450 motor into CB500T. I agree with that. Or uh, he's also got an 05 CBR600RR. Mm-hmm. He says that's a young man's game. A KZ650. He says it's a stupid chopper of unknown frame serialization, which the CB750 single overhead cam motor off of is going into. Wait. So he got a KZ650 chopper that had a CB750 single overhead cam motor in it. And he's pulling the motor out of the chopper and putting that into a 77 CB750F that he found with no motor. Mm. Good fucking yeah. job, wow. Eric. So, wait, so what? Four years ago, no, no bike. Yeah. And now, yeah. Thirty bikes and building things. Oh, wait till you hear what else he's got. Stop, okay. Stop listening to the podcast now. Yeah, you, you've peaked, dude. You've peaked. Start your own fucking podcast. We'll listen to it. Yeah, that's good. That's a good plan. The uh, so he's uh, he's got his Punisher. So he's got a he's got a Versi 650 first generation. A Punisher, John. Mm-hmm. So he's got a Punisher Versi 650, which he's put 2,300 miles on since January. Nice. Moto nice. Stories convinced me to attend my first vintage days, coming up in July, as well as to buy a 76 Suzuki TC100 Blazer. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh-huh. I found just for the occasion of AMA Vintage Days, and it says, only virgins and heroes. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Fucking AMA Vintage Days, only versions and heroes. It was a, it was a back of the old warehouse find. I picked up for way too little money, but I've gotten it smoking and ripping ruts up in my yard. So thanks for enabling my habit. Oh, and do I get extra swag if I tattoo ride fast and take chances somewhere on my person? Yeah, sure. Wow. Honestly, honestly surprised I don't have it somewhere on my person yet. So there you have it. So th- thank you, Cork. Well fucking done. Well played. That was an awesome fucking letter. Yep. Dig that shit. Super Extra cool. points if it's on the bottom of your scrode. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh. so John gets to inspect it to make sure it's there. It depends on, like, if you can lift your scrote with one hand or if you need both hands to lift it up, because, you know, older guys, the scrote does get bigger. And you need a Manscaped 4.0 so I yeah, can you actually can see, yeah. appreciate the whole thing. It'll need the, the new Manscaped. <laughs> the the new Manscaped good market for flame the tattooers edition. for shaving. Oh, yeah. Just, I mean, come on. Zap. You're done, yeah. yeah. I, I dig that. Dig the hell out of that. <laughs> so that's super cool. Uh, John... We all got to ride the new Trail 125. Nice. So uh, you were a little late, so you didn't get a chance. You have to ride it after the podcast, I guess. But the uh, anyone have any comments about the... Um, Oscar, what did you say about its overall dimension? Because Oscar has my Trail 110. Yes, I have I have the CT110, yeah. and it, it they, they did it right, but it... It, it feels, it looks like it was, it, it is on roids. <laughs> it's right the fuck up swole. from what it's wool. Yes, that's the word. It's, it looks it's, like you fed it a lot of bread. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's definitely swole as fuck. Yeah. But, but you know what? As soon as you get on it and you roll on the throttle, it's a Honda. Oh, like it's it, 100% yeah. it's just a Honda, Honda yeah. man. Yeah. Now, even the, the, the motor, like, you, the sound is the same. The um, gearing feels the same. It does. The, the clinkiness yeah. of, because it doesn't have a clutch, so the right. clinkiness of the gearing. The, the 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 everything the exhaust so sounds kind of the same. The bar just, in your back of your ass when you try to slide no, that's back not a bit. that's not the original uh, right. Yeah, of, that's uh, true. They oh. did steal that design from the Simba, so they did they did oh. nail the Simba effect. That is, if you slide back far enough oh, you, on the seat, you yeah. get that bar in your fucking your tailbone. Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to think what. The, so tell me a little. I don't know the backstory on this particular bike. Uh, the backstory bike on this bike can... is it had 239 miles on it. Mm-hmm. And uh, the gentleman who I got my Super Cub from, that mm-hmm. we met last week. So the guy who had my Super Cub in the background of the picture of the Super Cub when he was trying to so trade that's me. that's your Super Cub, Yeah, it's too. my Super Cub, yeah. All right. Yeah, wow. yeah, we're doing good. Uh, so he, when he traded me the Super Cub for a Benelli TNT 135. So he traded me for that. And then he's an older Italian gentleman. So when he came, he called me um, a couple of days later 
and he said, I got to give you, I got to trade you back the, the Benelli TNT 135. I can't handle it. It's too crotch rockety. It's too sporty. Right. Really? So it's too sporty. And he didn't like it because it was too much of a sporty riding position. I said, okay, he's an older guy. So fair, yeah, fair put, dinkum. Put risers on mine. I know. Like, <laughs> right up, man. <laughs> but, well, again, it, you know, here we are. So I said, well, I said, okay, that that's fair enough. You know, but I don't really want to give you the super cup back. No tradesies, no backsies, man. <laughs> so I'll take the trade. I'll take the Benelli back, but I really don't want to give you the super cup back. He goes, oh, it's okay. I don't want it back. <laughs> you uh, like, that was easy. Uh, what? I was like, you're not giving, he goes, I want to get a Vespa. I said, oh, okay, uh, all right, right, that's okay. But, if, you know, he wants a Vespa 300 and that's like three Benelli's, mm-hmm, right? Yeah, yeah. So a Vespa 300 is like 2.6 Benelli's. So I was like, well, okay, then we're going to have to come out of pocket quite a bit here. Things have got to change around a lot. Yeah. So we start talking about like what he owns. And I said, well, <laughs> I did happen to notice in the background of one of your pictures, there was a spanking fresh Trail 125 back there, CT125. And he's like, oh, yeah, but I'm not ready to sell that. Oh, yes, you are. And I was like, well, <laughs> okay, fair enough. But I'm ready to buy it. Okay, well, exactly. Exactly. we're done talking I was, then. And I kind We're of done said, talking okay. then. I said, okay, so their trade in value on your TNT 135 is this, and you want this very expensive Vespa. So now you owe me this large sum of money. And then I, I showed him how much money you owed me, and he went, can I think on it for a day? And I was like, you have 24 hours. So. I literally, I still had the, I have still have the super cub and he came back and he goes, okay, so super cub and the trail towards the Vespa 300. And I went, now we are speaking a language in which I operate. So he's like, yeah, let's, let's work this out. So we literally put together a whole stack of numbers and figured out the way it worked, did some long division, did some short math, figured it all out. And uh, I said, great, then this is, this, this deal is going to probably happen. I, I'm completely confident of that. Well, he changed his mind twice on the 300. Then he went back to, well, I want a Sean Weatherspoon 150. And then I was like, well, you can't have one. They, people are waiting a, a year to get those things, you know, and uh, not a year, but like six to eight weeks. And he goes, <laughs> okay, well, so he can't, we're not really getting this together. And I said, you know what? Take the Vespa out. So I got this white, and he's the only person in the past six months who's been able to walk in here and leave the next day on a Vespa because there's a back order for that shit. But, you know, he didn't realize how special he was. He thought that was just easy. So I was like, okay. So he takes the Vespa out and I'm like, all right, this is perfect. This is where we need to be on this deal. And then he let me know that he still owed 2,200 bucks on the trail. And I was like, wait a second, dude, you can't sell a bike you don't own. You can't trade in a machine that you don't actually own. You got to call the bank first. You know, let's, let's get, let's make sure you own this before I go dumping negative equity into something. And so he went out and he wrote it and he called me an hour later after he left the shop on the 300 Vespa. And he's like, and he's got a heavy Italian accent, but he's like, Phil, this is the greatest bike I've ever owned. And he has a 2021 Harley Davidson Sportster 48, which is, you know, 12 grand, 13 grand with 300 miles on it. And he's like, I need another Vespa. What? Yeah, yeah, I need a Vespa for my son. I need to get a Vespa for my son. And I was like, is this like a game of a shell game where if you make enough moves, I I'm gonna lose track of how much money you've spent because you've never dealt with me before. And I'm like, I've got this math figured out in my head down to the percentage. So no. And he's, I'm like, and I don't want your Harley. And he goes, but my Harley's worth 12 grand. And I'm like, no, it, it was worth 12 the day you bought it. Not really. Cause it was a sportster, but anyway, so <laughs> I felt terrible, Wait, but I'm like, are 12 grand, a brand new, a brand new, I looked it up 1290. Uh, he paid $12,999 for it, but they're not making them anymore. So therefore they're rare. <laughs> okay. So long story longer. Um, basically he came back in and I had the, the math all figured out and he rolled out of here. We prepped him a racing sixties Vespa 150, and he showed up to get the bike and he was all excited. And I had all the paperwork drawn out, figured out who would, he, who would put money where. So he now he's got two Vespas in literally oh, so he three took days. the 100 and also the one. Yep. Okay. And so okay. while he was in here, he kept looking at the red Vespa, the red Primavera, and he kept looking at that and he's like, you're going to hate me. And I'm like, not as long as I still have the Trail 125. <laughs> as long as I still have the Trail 125, we're getting along just great. And he goes, well, I want the red bike. And it just so happened I had a red one I could give him. So I was like, 
we can do this. So I literally brought the bike over here and did the world's fastest prep you've ever seen in my life before he could change his mind again. And we drew all the paperwork up. And while he was signing many things that said he was not allowed to have ever have any backsies. And I was nervous because is it okay to say black, black, no trade back? I, you know, I, I was like, whatever, dude, I, whatever the rule is, and you know, no backsies period. Well, in Ohio, we do not, everyone, everyone who talked to in Ohio says, well, you know, you get a buyer's remorse law three days. If you buy a car, you don't like it. You can return it three days. No questions asked. That's not true. Here's a tip you're going to learn today. Anybody who tells you like, oh, you know, sure, Steve, if you want to buy this brand new Buick Century, um, you know, you can drive it for up to three days and you can get all your money back because there's a law that says that in the state of Ohio, mm -hmm. buyer's remorse law. That's not true, guys. That was made up. That's fake. Look it up. It's not. There are certain states where they do have a buyer's remorse law. Ohio ain't one of them. So... <laughs> I made it very clear to the guy, including printing out where it specifically says Ohio does not have a three-day buyer's remorse I mean, How would law. that be fair to a dealer? It's horribly it's not. not. <laughs> it, it's nothing that you sell then is new anymore. Of like, course not. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, you know, if somebody goes out and drives something 30 miles, the fact that he owned it yeah. means it's, it's not. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, so that happened. And so by the time it was all done, I, I was like, okay, I'm about to shake your hand, even though it's COVID, but I'm shaking my hand so that on every level... Gentleman's level, paperwork level, signature level, everything. Spin on end, just I'm not going to have to give up the Trail 125, one, <laughs> and I'm not going to have to give up the Super Cub, and you are buying these two Vespas. The 300 and the Primavera. So he bought two bikes, yeah, a 300 and a Primavera, okay. and I took these two in trade. And he's thrilled. I'm super happy because what the fuck? That's yeah. cool. And Nobody got a piece of shit. Everybody got good stuff. I'm thrilled. Yeah, yeah I'm super thrilled. Yeah. I did find out if somebody does ask you, a Trail 125 with a 210 pound lightly shaved ape can do exactly 56 miles an hour indicated. I don't know what that is in actual freedom units, but I know the indicator said 56 miles an hour. I bet you a stock one without the stuff could do a 57. Yeah, yeah. because there is at least <laughs> 100 wow. pounds of yeah. farkle on that bike. Yeah. yeah, there's so much candy on that is thing. Is this full? Uh, it is now. So that's when I got home from Porco the other night, I had like vapors in it yeah. and I was like, I'm going to try to make it to work. I, I've heard from Steve Hoffert that these bikes get amazing miles per gallon. These things. Those super cubs do. Well, it's same operating system, right? Yeah. So I mean, I've, I've heard they do very well, but just the same when that, when the needle, when the fuel gauge said E, I was like, I'm not going to take any chances. So I went the long way to work, stopped and got gas and then filled up the one gallon, uh, roto pack. Oh, it's one gallon. It's, it's, Ish, ish, eh. three liters, you know. Eh. So, when, so the, I, when the light blinks, yeah, does this one blink? Or I, it didn't blink. It, it just went. It just like they were all there, you know. At some point, you know, when they, when I started the journey, you know, things were lit up. But at the end, there was nothing there, and I didn't see anything blinking either. Yeah. So, so right on right. the super cob, yeah. when the eat shit light comes yeah. on, you have yeah. a half a gallon left. Okay, well that's a lot. That's fifty miles. So yeah, yeah. Uh, on the. I'm sorry, the the monkey, monkey, monkey? monkey. Yeah. yeah, the super cub is like maybe point four. Okay, well, so you still yeah. have point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you still have four well, miles. Well, to give you an idea, we know the gas can hold. We know the gas tank should hold one gallon, right? And we agree right. it's a one gallon gas tank. It took nine tenths, so I was pretty low. And, and it wasn't blinking, and there wasn't a. No, it was just. There were no segments illuminated. All the segments, it was a LCD display. So all the segments were off. Nothing was blinking. No E. I, there's an E and well, an F. Well, yeah. right, right, right. The E didn't go away. Well, the other <laughs> so, way around. Yeah, exactly. Go. Okay, so it's, yeah. it's different than... Um, I have a strong feeling that in this particular gauge, being that the, the tank took nine tenths of a gallon, Probably. I now know that it's uh, if I'm waiting for things to blink... That's probably not going to happen. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. still the tank right underneath the seat, right? It sure Just is. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's a little disappointing they couldn't stretch it a little bit more, you know, yeah. like a gallon and a half, like yeah. bump it out underneath the somewhere, you know what I mean? I like, can't figure out, like you said, it's beefed up like it's on roids, yeah. but it also has ABS in there somewhere, and I couldn't find yeah. out where the ABS controller yeah, I was. Look for it. I, I looked for it, I couldn't it see it. So Inside the press steel frame. It's hiding where somewhere. it should be, probably right. behind the battery in the... Yeah. yeah, somewhere really easy to get to. The uh, But yeah, so it's very interesting. There's all these tie-down points on the bike, which are 
uh, everywhere. There's little circles. There's little plastic circles. Well, the original circles. one had those as but well. He's, yep. he's yeah. also bought every little accessory you could yes. ever yeah. want. He bought the catalog. He just said, Where, where's the catalog? Right. Oh, you've got yeah. the yeah. rear rack. You've back. got the front rack. You've the got lights. the mid rack. You've got the lights. All you've the got lights the are tail armored. Lights. Yeah. Yeah. You got the OEM uh, bicycle bell. You've got the, yes, right, that right, is right. the uh, Honda that, part number bicycle bell. That is the Soshido Honda commemorative bicycle bell, I think. The, yeah. the cards exactly. as well. Oh, and the bell. Nice. And Sounds good, though. your pizza rolls are done. <laughs> <laughs> so this is called Totino's? Now? This is, yeah, this is, this is my Honda Hunter but Cub. When yeah. I got here, though, I, I, had, a, I had a chastise uh, Phil. I was like, you've had this for three days, and yeah. it doesn't have knobbies. I know. Yeah, yeah. it's been a busy three days, man. It has been TKC. a very TKC, TKC yeah. 70s or 80s on there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I haven't looked yet to see if they make TKC 80s for this thing yet. For but before years. Mid-Ohio happens, that shit is going, those tires are going to get chunky. This, this is the ultimate Mid-Ohio. It is yeah. the ultimate Mid-Ohio. Really the ultimate. Yeah. 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 I would go with the Kenda K760 Trackmasters. Trackmasters, yeah. They are Ooh. DOT yeah. knobbies. They are DOT knobbies. Yep. They are knobbies. Yep. But they are DOT. They are also legal. DOT. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, huh. for real. All that in a bag of chips, too. Huh. Like this you, You'll be riding around and it'll be going. Brrr, yes. Brrr, yeah. Okay. yeah. You could probably bring a bike back from the, the swap area Easily. on this. There is no doubt in my mind. Yeah. 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 I do like the fact that it has the pad installed for your passenger's comfort, mm-hmm. even though that the foot pegs that are attached to the swing arm, there would be no way for you to put your right leg on the There's, foot peg no. and not get stuck to the muffler. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, it probably be, that probably doesn't get hot though. It probably doesn't. No, no probably doesn't. It smells yeah. like no, it's chicken. A, it's, the guard. <laughs> it's the guard. Yeah. Hey, oh, I made our track way safer today. You did? What? You closed it down? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so John was mowing in the backyard while I was planting the garden. J Town. Yep. J Town. J Town. <laughs> and Sville. <laughs> S doesn't stand for Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in Sville and he was in J Town mowing. <laughs> and he's, he had to get home. I'm so, making signs. Yeah. I'm fucking printing signs. Yeah, print signs yeah. <laughs> so I got on the mower and I'm mowing the track and going around and around. And all of a sudden the mower just stopped. I mean, like the blades just stop. I'm like, oh shit, I'm done. I'm not going to mess around with this. I drive the uh, mower back to the garage and I have to go up a little side slope. I ran over an entire spool of barbed wire. <laughs> what? Whoa. And it hooked up underneath. Uh, it hooked up underneath in the blades. And when I was going up that hill, it rolled on its side, and it it had high centered me. Oh shit! In the mower because it rolled on its side and it high centered me. But that was in the track. Oh Whoa. my god! What? Where? What part? I'm confused. By the like on the, when on you the get, back uh, end. We've the numbered all the turns. The wet turn. The wet turn. Oh, so yeah. Turn, oh. turn four. Or four. Yeah, four, yeah. yeah turn four. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when you came out of turn four, right, so, right so that's there. Yeah, there was that whole pile of yeah, shit yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. north of J-Town. Yeah, that's north of J-Town for yeah. sure. Yeah. No, that's south no, of J-Town. No, that's south of J-Town. South of J-Town. Yeah, that's like, that's like getting close <laughs> to the container. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So very, Damn, very cool. <laughs> so, uh... J-Town's a ghetto in my book. Okay. <laughs> no, it's J-Town Heights. <laughs> so so I, I listened to the podcast, like I think it was two before, the yeah. ones that I wasn't in. Thanks for for uh, recommending On Any Sunday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh what a yeah. great boot. I have never watched it before. You never watched it? No, it was, it was a lot of fun. And there's only one first time, so that right. was like yes. the best. Yeah. No, I was just couldn't stop watching it. It, so it is amazing. Yeah. Do you see how that, that movie... Um, created all the skateboard vis- oh snowboard. I can I mean, totally they see that everything. Yeah. that yeah. and the early surfer movies like um, Endless Summer yeah, yeah, Endless yeah, Summer. yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure no, yeah. amazing movie it is fantastic yeah. isn't it and it's just and the funny thing about it is it's just so fucking good like I mean and how old it's 50 years old now right? yeah At oh least? yeah this is the yeah, 50th so anniversary yeah. Yeah. so what makes this I mean kind of what makes this an important uh, AMA Vintage Days is because on any Sunday is the theme Mm-hmm. Right. So that's the theme. Uh, I think that, I mean, everything about it is going to be magical. I mean, and the fact that, you know, that that for me growing up, that was such an important part of my life was watching that movie. And that was the kind of thing. It was just guaranteed to be a good time. And you can't watch that without learning something. It's it's an no, impossible true, movie yeah. to watch without picking up something about something. And it is super. And cool. you can't watch it without like your enthusiasm. I mean, yes. I don't care who you yeah. are. 
Yeah. If you watch it, even if you've never ridden a motorcycle mm-hmm. and you watch that, yep. it has to get you a little amped up about okay. motorcycles. If it doesn't, then you absolutely don't want. Have, oh have my it, you know? God. Yes. I, th- there is nothing about that movie that isn't just as you're watching it and you're going along, you're going, that's significant. Yeah. Oh, that's significant. Yeah. That's significant. And even things that, you know, at the time you're like, oh, well, that doesn't really make much sense. Well, then 10 years later, you're like, oh, all that shit comes home. Like, oh, well, Yamaha, this piano company, I wonder if they're going to end up being anything important in the motorcycle world. Right. And not only yeah, that, just a little bit. <laughs> and, and it was really in the time in which it was filmed. It was right. in like the heyday of motorcycling. Yeah. Like yep. what yeah, was absolutely. going on at that time? Like every little kid, every everybody wanted, you know, it was yep. in yeah. a really good time in motorcycle history. And where else are you going to see? Like, so you know, obviously it's always talking about Steve McQueen. Right. But it's not like he has a cameo. That no. dude's like ripping like two mile long wheelies right. on an Elsinore, yeah. killing it. Like yeah. he was into it. You know yeah, what I mean? Bruce like, Brown had that right. It was the right time in the right place, and and it really was. It was it was epic. Is the right the right word for it? It was epic. I mean, right from the beginning, like when yeah. the kids are riding their bicycles and they're like Rrr. charged up, man, charged up from the get go, and it's like. So one of our friends, Patty, who's from New Jersey, is one of our podcast listeners. Um. We, you know, he's a, he's a, he's working in the ER. And Patty, Patty he, Wagon? Yeah. <laughs> it was, we, like, he's we, never we, heard that ever. No, no. Right? Pe- <laughs> Peppermint <laughs> Patty? No, his, uh, his brother, though, his brother is, uh, he sells uh, furnishings, patio furniture. <laughs> patio yeah. furniture? Yeah. Is it Patty with two Ds is, or a T? <laughs> it's two Ds. Yeah. And then so, his other, his other yeah. brother's in the burger industry, Cow. Cow pad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he says, uh, came in today and had a state trooper who was goofing off on a shit Chinese scooter. Well, he said the motor surged and then suddenly went clank and locked up mid fishtail. The fling poo flung him on his face <laughs> <laughs> while only wearing a half helmet. It did what oh. it does. <laughs> it fling poo. Hey, hey. <laughs> Who flung <laughs> poo? True. A broken wrist <laughs> and a lot of surge, plastic surgery stitches put in his mouth back together. Oh, oh no. no. Half helmet. A day later, he hobbled out with a lopsided smile, saying now he has a really great scooter story. (laughs) And he loves morphine. (laughs) It screamed Cleveland Moto when I felt that I needed to share it. He said, ride fast and take chances. Fuck yeah, yeah, it does. Right on. So Patty's like, yep, still listening to your podcast. I have locked in mid-Ohio with another first-timer. Get that man some Narcan. I I get the overall gist of the fuckery to expect based on your raving. I figured if you tards can roll an RV, I can bring a truck and trailer. I'm thinking my KLX to ride around the campground, and uh, I'll have space in the pickup truck if I happen to pick up anything. A wise mount. Yep. Yeah. And he says, any way you guys could do a somewhat succinct mid-Ohio prep course? And uh, he says, I already have an autopsy-sized cooler for the amount of liver lube I plan on leaving. Uh, You'll just be a beer filter for that whole I want to have enough firepower to leave a free invite to your crew and any misfits that show up. Well, Patty, I'm glad you brought that up because our friends, the misfits, um, they're coming up. Yay! Yay! So, uh, yeah, so... uh, Cam is excited. (laughs) (laughs) Cam's recently married, so I don't think we'll ever see him again. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's usually the first thing that denies in a new dies in a new marriage is the privilege to go to something like yeah, Middle yeah, right, right. at least for the first five or six years of a marriage. Right. So the, it hasn't uh, died in mine. Again, it ain't the first five or six years of a marriage. Oh, my yeah. wife's pretty excited that I'm leaving for four days. <laughs> yes. so she goes, "Can you go earlier? It's right. Wednesday. Come Can on. you leave Wednesday, please? <laughs> yeah, I got a guy coming. I mean, hold on, uh, we got stuff to do. The uh, so here's the thing: is Liza's bringing Emma. Okay. Ooh. And they're bringing their relatively new uh, member of the podcast, Stumpy John. Ooh, interesting. Again, with a name like Stumpy John, it's got to be good. So uh, <laughs> that's all there is to it. Uh, so yeah, I just kind of up- wish it was Stumpy Jill. I'm kind of into that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> just up to the elbow. The, uh, As everybody at work knows. There you go. <laughs> so... Why this is significant is um, we have been invited by Liza, challenged is too harsh of a word, (laughs) to finally sort out the whole top 10 list thing. Oh. (laughs) But we're going to do it with a live audience. So we need to start an Excel sheet and get this, like, we got to lay this out. Well, I think we need categories. I mean, like, fixed categories. So this is the amorphous categories. So in our discussion, I said that. In the spirit of vintage motorcycle days, we should probably do 
something like the five best and five worst vintage motorcycles, um, something like that. But anyway, we, things we'll will change. But she did make a point of saying, well, Phil, you have to promise that your podcasters will actually show up. And I said, whoa, what? whoa, whoa, back the bus up that you're throwing me under there, Liza. Yeah, hold on a minute. Now, wait a second, because I remember when we were in an air-conditioned tower mm-hmm. doing a podcast, and there were quite a few Cleveland Motards in that room. And uh, I don't remember if there was one afterwards, but she said there was one that we did where John was just too drunk to show up or something. I, I, I don't even, I, I don't even want to dignify that with a response. Well, it's possible. <laughs> I, mean, I, think it was the, I think it was the year we were doing the zero test rides and we man. went straight from oh. the zero test rides right over to the thing. Man, yeah. man. Could, could happen. But also but. there's a certain window of podcast time. You don't want to try to do a podcast at 1130 on Friday. Exactly. You know, like that's right. what you're going to get. Right. If it was yeah. Saturday steak night, eh, <laughs> then there's a chance. Not, right. I was not there. I'm with you, man. So anyway, so we're going to make sure that we have a good attendance. So so that we can do ourselves <laughs> proud because they're bringing their big guns. They're bringing Miss Emma. Oh, yeah. And let's just, let's just admit it. When it comes to knowledge of all oh, things, motorcycle, yep. Miss yeah. Emma is, oh. is strong medicine. So yeah. So very excited about that. Just extremely excited. I always, I will always defer to Emma. She is an mm-hmm. encyclopedia of motorcycle history. So really excited about it. I mean, couldn't be more excited, but they did ask that we put them up and they did ask us to provide them with motorcycles. So if that's all they're asking for, you know, that's cool. We can do that. That should not be a problem. I mean. No, we have tents and campers and all kinds of crazy crap. With this man. I might just bring the hearse and make them all sleep in it. With this man over here to my left has purchased in the last week. (gasps) What did you get, Steve? I mean, what didn't he get? Oh, the quad and the... I mean, he's got... already went over that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. all the bullshit that no, he what has... Was the new, what was Purple uh, purple Pleasure? Or purple oh, Purple Rain. Rain? Purple Rain? No, it's not Purple Rain. I don't Are name you sure my freaking bikes. <laughs> purple I saw Rain, Purple <laughs> Rain. Okay, stop. There's enough. You can't... Just yeah, two, yeah. three seconds. Let's, we yeah. had a decent harmony. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, but let's anyway, then let's just call it... Fentanyl. Okay, let's call it when doves cry. <laughs> yes, because what I saw was I saw a very moist purple motorcycle. You like that? I like that. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. that. that. That bike was so fucking was, ready to go, it was the loose. ground was wet. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I made him wash it before he put it in. Right <laughs> away. <laughs> you made him wash it before you made him put it in? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. That's what she said. It looked uh, cool. Well, you call me a lot of things, but don't call me a dirty cocksucker. No, no, that's it. <laughs> Amen, brother. So super fucking cool. So absolutely. So let's just let's just for the sake of fun, and we've all done this many times. We've all been to Mid Ohio. So much it hurts. So the things you absolutely must have at Mid Ohio. Would anybody like to say first thing you absolutely must have at Mid Ohio? Go ahead, anyone. You fucking sunscreen. Okay, okay. I'm going to tell you sunscreen or a giant fluffy hat. I prefer a sombrero. Also, as water, much as much. Water, I was about to say, is everybody yeah, talking about yeah, beer and stuff? Yeah. Water is going to be pivotal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've there is no such thing as a mid Ohio that has only one season. No, <laughs> there are weather fronts that come and go in mid Ohio. It has its own microclimate. Um, we have been there when we have seen the sky go from beautiful as your blue sky to being the son of fucking Gozar. Well, and, yeah. and exactly what you're saying. So, like, I've, I've seen some posts from people that are like, well, I've been to Barber and the grass is manicured and it's very nice. <laughs> is mid Ohio like this? No, just stay at Barber, dude. Okay. So, so you need to bring at least a set of footwear that you know that it's Never not going back, back and Never it's going to be destroyed. Back. And you're camping in a leech field. Yep. I, and this is an excellent point. And I do want to, I want to spend one second on that. So if you're at mid Ohio, if you're at Barber, for instance, and you're, you're walking around on a substance, we all can identify as grass, right? That grass is growing <laughs> in a substance. We all can identify as dirt, right? Okay. But dirt costs money mm. at mid Ohio. They get, I can't tell whether it's horse shit or cow shit, but they don't pay for dirt because cow shit shows up for free. I'm convinced the same truck that sucks out the toilet comes back around and hoses down the roads. Yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> because when it got sloop, when it got real soupy, and we were pulling vehicles out of the mud and stuff like that, the smells that came out of everything I washed after right. Mid Ohio—it's not earth; it's it more earth. like ass. Yeah. Yes, it is <laughs> definitely. 
not fucking earth. It smells better at the plant than yes. it smells at Oh, Bill. way better. <laughs> and like, the deeper you go, like if you get stuck and you yeah. start digging in, yeah. the worse it smells. Oh, yeah, because that's <laughs> dinosaur shit there. You know, yeah. The thing of it is, you don't get stuck. You don't go down. No. You can get stuck on perfectly no. level ground there. Creme yeah. brulee, man. You'll, Creme you'll, brulee. Your tires won't even sink in. You'll just be spinning and not be able to move. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's exactly right. I should bring my tractor there. Well, which one? Well, the high ace has already <laughs> proved it can pull anything oh, yeah, out of anywhere. Ace. So if the high ace is there, everybody's safe. But the uh, no joke, bring shoes or boots that you Spossible don't necessarily stuff, yeah. want to come home with. I just wear sandals and let them just let it, fucking, yeah, you just know. let it go natural. Yeah, there's. But if you want something that'll strap to your feet so yep. they don't get stuck. And in if the you're mud. running, if you're running some kind of a tent or a, a trailer or right. an RV, right? Um, prepay the cleaning fee. Yep. Like you just just do it. <laughs> yep. Just just do it. Yeah. yeah. And it is a real good idea if you're gonna try to walk it. Keep in mind it's really fucking big. So yeah. like the distance from the farthest point of the swap meet to the farthest point in the campground is probably two miles. Yeah, I mean, so, at least a bicycle. You got to yeah, bring something. Yeah, with it's a good idea it. to have some sort of transportation, unless you want to spend. Skateboards won't work. They won't work. No, no. I, my motto is I'm not walking them. No, no. <laughs> fuck no. That's why God provided C70 me with a talent. Was the best thing to take. What's that? My C70 yeah. was the best thing yeah. to take. Those bikes are perfect for Mid Ohio. Um, excuse me, it was not the best thing to take. Why? Because the best thing to take is a CT90. Yeah, that's true. Or yeah. a 110. Right. I thought we've already no. established that. Or this. Because <laughs> it's the best bike. If you have the means, I highly recommend. I highly means. recommend that. Yeah, 125, yeah. 110, the C70 90, could have 70. Stood, the, the C70 could have been benefited by a little more knob. Yeah. yeah. A little more knob on the rubber would have been a good thing. I mean, That's right. my whole life has been like <laughs> that. John is right. John, John, John is <laughs> Thank you. Clarification. Yeah. Yes. Because this is the Cleveland Moto Podcast. We will admit that the C the C70 is not. Steve, are you going to be able to edit that out later? <laughs> sure. sure. That's it. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. So really, I mean, we don't want our enemies. I mean, our friends hearing that. Yeah. If you're going to camp, here's the trick. You got to spend a little extra time finding your campsite. Make sure that what you're preparing yourself for is shit blowing away. We lost <laughs> 2000 pop up tents one year. I mean, it was literally the sky was full of pop up tents. Easy up apocalypse. It was the. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Oh, that's Man. a shirt. God damn it. Yeah. Easy apocalypse. But, but oh, one that's thing, awesome. The people need to know, though, is that this isn't every year. Right. Some years no. it's literally the Sahara Desert. Right. Some years it's it's Louisiana Swamp. I disagree. Some years it's a, I disagree. I disagree. Yeah. It's that every year. I guarantee. Well, all of it, but I'm if saying you like, say If you go down yeah. Wednesday right. or Thursday, Thursday morning, yeah, right. yeah. and you're there Thursday, Friday, yeah. Saturday, and leave Sunday, yeah. Yeah. it is going to be everything. Yeah. 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 And the, the, it is going to be searing heat. Yep. And then it's going to rain. rain. Yep. Yeah. And then it's going to be muck Nugged. up to your knees. Yep. And then it's going to be hot and humid. Yep. And then it may rain again. Yeah. It may be yeah. sunny again. Yeah. Who knows saying, what can day, happen? Like some are like three or four, three days of sun and one day of rain. Right. Some days yes. it's like three days of we rain. We can never schedule day. what yeah. day the rain's going to It's yeah. July. So there's right. going to be sun. So right. sun yeah. protection, yeah. easy yep. ups. Yeah. So umbrellas. Goofy food. hats. Big, dumb, goofy, like garden hats might sound If you're going to camp in a tent, make sure you have one tamp, one tarp for under the tent. Yeah. And another tarp for over the tent. Um, that's a good tactic. You will, or fly. an easy up. I like to take. I like the easy yep. up because easy up over a tent. Is easy amazing. up. You yeah. take it and you set it up during the day, and you yeah. hang out and you work on yeah. your bike. At night, you slot, you move it back and yeah. put it over your tent yeah. and, bring and, and bring it down. Bring it down for down. for sleeping. Yeah, and it is perfect. Uh, that's a big deal. If you are a person that likes to wake up in the morning early then you better bring earplugs for at night because it is fucking rowdy. Yeah. yeah. Don't plan on sleeping no. more than three or four hours a night. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Unless, unless you're like, you know, if you really want to, you can find, you can camp way up past yep. the, the swap shop. Yeah. And they have spots up there where oh, it yeah. is quiet, but yep. you're not really experiencing. Yeah. That's a good thought is be careful where you decide to camp. Yeah. Because if you do want to sleep, you're going to strongly regret being in the Louisville moto <laughs> anywhere corner. near yeah. us. Right. Yeah. Gonna, like in our neighborhood as a whole is very noisy. But you could be up by where the long term, where the truck parking is by the yep. swap meet. There's a whole area up there of people camping. So that's great. I mean, um, if you really want to sleep, you should try to. Well, I don't even know if you can book a hotel now. Yeah, I don't know. But let's what, stay off site. What I would strongly recommend if you do want to sleep uh, is if you like the sound of uh, generators, 
you can you can camp over <laughs> by the really big campers that park like around turn five and turn six and all those places, um, which is way 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 away from us the noisemakers because the people with the big campers tend they'll to keep be it real they'll quiet. be sleeping great because yep. they've got their air they conditioning got their AC right. going <laughs> exactly. Um, the other thing too is think about your hygiene because there are there are good showers there mm. and there are. The good showers have been renewed. So last year they were pretty nice. Yeah. Okay. So last two year, years ago, two years ago. Yeah, last year. Yeah, exactly. The they were pretty nice. The last one, the new showers were pretty pretty nice. But are you standing in line behind behind five other guys who are naked, cutting so their nuts? Yeah. If you get up at six or seven, no. If you get up right. at seven thirty, you're fucked. Yeah, you're fucked. You're in line. Yeah. Um, I took a shower at Mid Ohio one time. Right. And bring survival food. Yeah. That's one true. time. Yeah. Really? Well, it I was, was like, I went in, I'm like, I'm like, and then I go to, I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay, there's a line right. of naked guys, yep. six deep, yep. watching the guys shower. Yep. And I, exactly I waited true. through the line. Yep. I was like, okay, well, yep. okay, I'll do and then it. he got his first golden shower. I'm like, if I'm going to look, look at one dick, I might as well look at all of them. Oh, yep. But I'm like, all of a sudden, the shower got a little bit warmer on the back of my leg, and the guy's <laughs> pissing on me. Um, watch out for shower rats, the kids. There's always kids yeah. running around. They'll, yeah. they'll take your soap and throw it at you and shit. Like these little rowdy what? fucking kids. Yeah. There's little rowdy fucking kids. They come in the shower. You're showering. I didn't know. Hey, would I, but I'm going to say. That this. didn't happen to me. But, but the other thing, too, <laughs> like the is. The bottle kids from Toilet yeah. Park. Baby boys. wipes are gold. So bring, oh, yeah. bring baby wipes. Oh. If, you, if you're smart, bring baby wipes. Um, the other thing like is. Like a good five gallon, like uh, one of those camping yep. things of water. water. Yeah. yeah. That you can just set on a yeah. table, open the spigot, put your head under yeah. it, and do a quick little bird bath. Yeah. yeah. It's priceless. Those things will make camping for the weekend so much more enjoyable. I mean, the thing you got to remember is nobody smells good there. Right. Like and you're food, in the sun, like, you know. Food is provided by vendors. So you are kind of saying, okay, well. It, there's in the infield, there's a decent number of food trucks that have really, actually really delicious food. Um, no questions about that. But remember, it's not McDonald's. So you might spend a couple of bucks more than you want to. But it's not California pricing. No. I mean, no. like we typically will go and get our breakfast sandwich in the morning, yep. lay in. Yep. That's like a That's our all day. six or $7 yeah. ridiculous yep. sandwich. Yep. You don't need lunch. Nope. And then in the evening, you figure it out. If you want to cook something Two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. Or run into town, whatever you want You're to definitely do. looking for that pizza wagon to show yeah. up. Yep. So uh, what we did learn is before shit gets real late, if you do want to run into town and buy yourself your provisions, mm. uh, the gas stations in town, which are like maybe five miles away from the event, you can't walk it. But you could definitely jump jump in your car, jump in a you know shitty bike you bought nine hours ago um, and get downtown. Those gas stations in Lexington are extraordinarily well appointed. So there's also a big grocery store in there. So you can get and not ridiculously need. priced. I mean no, they're no. not jacking the three. And there is the world's best in Lexington uh, Mexican the restaurant. Best Mexican restaurant in Lexington. In Lexington. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That is that is absolutely guaranteed. I, I want you to comments on that, uh, Oscar. He's been there. No comments. No comments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where the margaritas are greener than your motorcycle. Right. Yeah, that's it. Definitely fresh. <laughs> fresh. <laughs> yeah, absolutely the freshest margaritas. They remind ever. me exactly like Steve's when when he spent thirty five minutes handcrafting this beautiful cocktail yeah. in New York. Same thing at that restaurant. Really? No. Oh no. no. I was going to say these the, are good. The margaritas they do at the at that place come out of a 55-gallon drum that just says margarita on the side. Uh, yeah, it's got to be. There's, I thought there's it was a, a big Capri Sun bag. They it might have been. They just squeeze it in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Steve has uh, actually told me about the raspberry margaritas that he will produce from the wild raspberry patches Ooh. at They're the ship. Wild raspberry. Well, Your I margarita was the, those. His margarita in New York was. Well, the I've best got some news for you. There's tasted. lots of wild raspberries all the way over, all the way along the other scent, the fence. Ah, look at that. Yeah, so I get a, a bucket or two of raspberries. Perfect. I puree them, strain them. Yeah. And then I put a good, good tequila in it. And uh, so you're saying you're going to make some for this Sunday? Hey. No ras the raspberries aren't ready yet. It'll be like another month. They're coming on. We'll though. just have to drink tequila. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. terrible, terrible. Chot, chot, Worst chot, idea chot, ever. Chot, chot, chot. That doesn't bother me. <laughs> I love tequila. <laughs> I just selectively pruned that whole fence line and there's like raspberries so, growing. So I took like a down married couple. Took yeah, down they, they, together, they live together, yeah, they that, fuck together. You like, notice that? <laughs> <laughs> a little weird, isn't it? Yeah. Nope. Just a what? little weird. Oh, John's giving me this stink eye. 
There's no fucking. Okay. <laughs> I'll make that clear. I'll make that abundantly clear. We are going to Dairy Twist together tomorrow. Oh, there you go. <laughs> this is, we'll see where there's a conundrum, though, because we had Dairy Twist already this week, and we haven't had Mando. Oh we haven't had Mandarin Garden. So I, oh, you're, God. I, I think you're going to have to talk to Trevor to be the tiebreaker. Eat, eat to work. If I uh, if I get this job out by you guys, I'm fucked. <laughs> this is gonna go down. Yeah, no, Trevor <laughs> Trevor is a really really nice kid, but he eats like a six year old. Oh, okay. Well, he's like, give me the chicken fingers and oh no, <laughs> and and uh, really? curly you know, like, fries. Bar- no, the Barney fries. But, you know, oh Barney. but he's coming around because he got two corn dogs and a chili cheese dog from Dairy Twist nice. and a chocolate malted. So. Uh. And the other day they were out of corn dogs. Womp womp. Well, we were so disappointed. Wow. And there you have it. The uh, oh, I believe that. the place is called. Uh, I believe the spot is called Rancho Fiesta. Maybe. I yeah, think it I, is. I, yeah, I think that it kind that of familiar. It feels like it. Yeah. Rancho Fiesta. Rancho Fiesta. It was. It was uh, highly modified and updated in 1983. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> but what I will say is they have always managed to somehow. Work it out that we're that we always get fed. Oh yeah, and I think their claim to fame is it's the furthest point from Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never feel further from Mexico. And then they than were Rancho and Rancho. They Fiesta. were able to figure out bagel. Yes, yeah, which, which, and here, which is which is a feast right. in itself. So right. because it, bagels' yeah. dietary restrictions at the time was he could eat any variety of pea. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Yeah. And, and they didn't get mad when we showed up with like 47 people. No. Oh, we turned our eight top into an 18 top in <laughs> yeah. one phone call. Yeah. 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 And that lady was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> I ordered something. You think that's queso blanco? It's not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I ordered something with poblanos and it had no poblanos. Right. It had a side of frozen mixed vegetables. Oh, really? <laughs> and I was like. Just shut up and eat. What the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> Give me more margaritas, please. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to make. We're gonna, we're gonna now, have to compensate for the crime that just happened. Can we also oh, say? Yeah. Can we also say? Um, what? Are, like Phil, you're pretty yeah. good at this. Describe the gaggle of bikes that are usually riding to the Mexican restaurant. Okay. <laughs> so, very rarely is it anything with a license plate from this century. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there, there are some rules about Mid Ohio that I must warn you of. It's a big question of will. It make it. <laughs> right. There's usually one or two dead on the side. Can you of the ride road. that to town or not? It might be. It might be a whole five miles, maybe, from point of from the you know from yeah, the. It's, it's not a short distance. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a yeah from the RP to the SP. It might only be five miles. It is not a long range, but I can tell you this: it's got some hills in it, mm-hmm. and it can be challenging. And I've seen one or two bikes pop on those hills because also when we're going there, mm. I'd like to remind people that when we do decide to go to the Mexican restaurant, which is usually an hour and a half after everyone else decided to go to the Mexican restaurant. Um, we usually do it at the end of the, the working day. So we've had nine or 10 maintenance beers. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so then it's kind of like we, we go out and we're jumping on some bikes and we're like, okay, well, what are you going to ride? Fuck, man. I don't know. Well, just take that one. Well, I don't even know who owns it. I don't know. Somebody's <laughs> talking to somebody over there. Just take their fucking bike. Fuck it. They'll figure it out. <laughs> fuck it, man. And yeah, and we jump on it. But then we got so course, many bikes. If you don't like it, you can fuck, fuck it. it. <laughs> I just got that. Movie. It's so good. Oh my god. Yeah, I need to watch the, it again. That. <laughs> but what I will say is, invariably, the ride to the Mexican restaurant turns into the race to the Mexican restaurant. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, every year. Every year it turns into the race to the Mexican mm-hmm. restaurant. And every year it turns into like impromptu wheelie contests, <laughs> all kinds of crazy but shit. Mind you, most of the bikes are probably yeah. under 150 cc's or two or or less than 25 percent of the original factory horsepower right well that's what right. i was gonna say because i would be a thousand cc's because right. i had a TDM it's only 8- running on about 250 yes. of them i had my tdm 850 it was running on one cylinder right <laughs> yeah which means it was a 425 dragging another 425 right so it didn't have any surplus of power and i'm still wheeling it trying to wheelie it the whole way to the goddamn mexican restaurant but it is fun. And I mean, it's a load of fun. So anyway, there, there are opportunities for that kind of shenanigans, of course. Uh, yeah, that's that's Mid-Ohio, man. Yeah. Maybe bring an outfit. Maybe bring uh, shenanigans. Bring, oh, bring, bring cash. 
Cash talk for anything king. that you want. Yeah. 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 Don't show up with credit cards. The ATM there is vicious. Mm. So, uh, and probably the ATM has been hit by 97 other motherfuckers. Mm. Buy if, everything. Yeah. if you're super fancy, you can call right now and reserve a golf cart. Oh. You know, if you're hmm. fancy, you know, you don't want to mess around with any of that shit. I'm like a golf cart at a motorcycle show. Well, again, they have a lot of them. I know. So, yeah, they have a lot of them. Definitely would, a nice cooler, a nice chair. What I would recommend is to fly into some sort of Columbus airport and then have somebody rent the golf cart and pick you up at the airport in the golf <laughs> cart. Probably be the move, right? <laughs> Get the maximum out of your golf cart dollar that way. The uh, It is not close. So if you're going to be like, I'm going to fly in and take an Uber. No, you're not. It's really far away. Um, Cleveland and Columbus, I think, are the same distance from that particular destination. I so mean, if, if you were serious in, about flying into Cleveland, yeah. I mean, you could ride down with me. I'd yeah. consider I'm probably going to take the RV. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's people. That's that, yeah. that's however many people can yep. fit in an RV. Right. And if you want to, um, if like you have a certain amount of time. Once you're there, you're on your own. Fuck you. Yeah. Right. But <laughs> say you only have a day or two. Right. Don't be the guy that arrives at 10 o'clock a.m. and thinks he's going to get in right away. Because nope. that's you're going to be in line for no. two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Get there really early yeah. or late the next day or whatever. Right. But yep. the, whenever you think the prime time is, is probably the prime time. You're right. There's a lot yep. of fucking people. And don't show up on Sunday being like, I'm going to get there Sunday and get all the deals. No, motherfuckers leave that place Saturday night some mm-hmm. years. Um, a lot of times the really great deals aren't waiting for Sunday morning. If the weather's weird, people bail out early. We've seen people bail out on Saturday before. Oh, yeah. Also, if you yeah. if you find a guy pulling in and you see something you want yeah. and you buy it there, he yep. might just give it to you for a deal so you don't have to fuck with it. Yep, exactly. There yeah. will be bikes laying in the field if you want to drag them <laughs> home. Oh, we leave them every year. Carcasses. The Jawas yeah. always do well because okay. of us. Yeah, we're, <laughs> Carcasses. I love that. We're like, okay, we're going to leave that Yamaha out there, but you got to get those forks out because yeah. those are expensive yeah, no, forks. Suzuki. Yeah. Uh, we did both. Oh, those okay, yeah. we did both. Yeah, both of them. yeah we, we de-forkified both of those fish. Yeah. Because it was like, I'm not going to leave those forks. Right. You know, the forks were great. The bikes were not. You but. still have those forks? Yeah, of course. Mm. Mm-hmm. 850 might have an upgrade. I See, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's why you never leave good forks <laughs> right, on a bike. Right. Yeah, exactly. Bring so, lots of parachute flare fireworks. People oh, love those. People love those. No, said nobody ever. But it's not a bad idea if you go past the fireworks store on the way in to go, hey, maybe you guys get a little firework, you know? Maybe some small stuff or something yeah, like that. Right. Just want to be a little stupid. Yeah. Sprinklers, what do you call them? The Sparklers? I love fountains or a spinning oh, wheel. Yeah, fountains are, yeah, those are big fun. What I would tell you, though, is just remember this. There are rules at Mid-Ohio. Yep. I will read you the rules right now. Are you ready? No ramps. You're not allowed to have a ramp. Not a ramp. Not, not, a, ramp. A, ramp. not a ramp. Yeah. So uh, they did say one year, they said you can only ride motorcycles around if it has a plate on it. They, they told us that one year. Right. Uh which well, apparently it, any plate would fucking do, I guess. But who cares? They told us that. Then they said, if you tape a paper plate and yeah, put it on the back no, but, of your bike, no, it but isn't, it, isn't it like if you have a plate that it doesn't? It only costs a couple bucks on the property. But if it doesn't have a plate, it costs more. Or what? Something? I've if, never if heard you look. Like that. If you look, it says if you have a plated vehicle, it's like a twenty dollar fee to ride it on the the ground. Or I've never like seen that. that. I have never seen yeah, that. There has the never website. been anything no, like and that. Okay, you can so, drive your take anything goes. Yeah, it is anything goes. If your you, kid's quad, yeah. fine. Whatever bring, plate, no plate, whatever. Yeah, if you bring a bus, a school bus, hmm. with twenty motorcycles inside and sixteen people, you'll pay one parking fee. That I know. Uh, if you are concerned about like having a campsite or that kind of thing, you can book that. No problem. Get a campsite. Tent camping sites are very cheap and they will allow you enough room for one or two cars on the thing and then the tents. So it's, it's not expensive. It's, you know what the difference between a tent camping site and the RV camping site is $200 and You get an RV pass if you bring an RV in. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are bringing an RV into the campsite, at some point in the weekend, somebody is probably going to ask you to see your RV pass. And you have to buy that ahead of time and have it when you come in. So don't go in there without an RV pass thinking you're going to just get in. Um, now and you, the, uh, in the camping passes yep. too, you can't buy that right. weekend of. You I don't need to so. go online and buy a camp. Time. Yeah, exactly. I don't know though when they shut them off. I think they'll sell them to everybody no matter what. Yeah. But it always works out. I we guess. have had very good experience with the whole I'm camping and you're driving a Ford Econoline van with eight bikes in it and 16 people. And, you know, various different camping devices strapped to the Ford Econoline van and a pop top and a pop up trailer, a camper or whatever. 
and yet you're paying the I'm tent camping price. Overflow parking. Overflow parking. Exactly. I'm, just, I'm going to overflow parking. Exactly. Right. Overflow parking for years has always been the secret sauce. You're like, oh, where are you going to park? Oh, I got a swap meet. I got a booth in the swap meet. Where are you going to park? Overflow parking, of course. Well, yeah, get in. Get on the property, and then where you camp is entirely up to you. Here's one. If you're riding in for the day and yeah. you're on a big bike or something, yeah. bring some type of device to put underneath your kickstand because a oh. lot of times for the overflow oh, bike parking, it's on the grass. BMW on its side. Yeah, now, well, many bikes, but especially That's just an empty one. beer can. Yep. Well, I'm just saying, but if you could bring something, like, you know, just have it with you. A holy Bible, just go grab the Gideons and just, like, put a fucking Bible (laughs) under your kickstand, side stand, right. But, you know, a lot of people have the pucks and stuff like that. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, like it's not all just, it's not all blacktop parking. No, it's not. Right. Yeah, just remember, it's a little primitive out there. It's a little bit wild. uh, You know what? Let's give a shout out to the AMA. It might not hurt if you're an AMA member. There's some special things you can do if you're an AMA. I think the AMA does, sometimes does a cookout and stuff like that. There's enough, this reason reason alone there's a discount for being an ama member that is substantial that is damn near the cost of your ama membership so that's not a bad thing uh if you are planning on selling something jesus christ the whole place is a fucking swap meet right Mm -hmm. so you know you could post up in the middle two rows where everybody goes all day long what do we do every time we drive up that fucking road we're bird dogging for pie plates we're literally just looking for bikes that are for sale phil what's a pie plate mean if so you the pie plate is a weird thing because a pie plate is really just a paper plate and i don't know when we started calling them pie plates it makes no goddamn sense because it, it's something you eat for dessert okay Usually. all right so they didn't want to do all the yeah the it, dishes well, the slovenians would do the big plates yeah so you'd have a little paper plate so i had a yard sale this weekend <laughs> yeah. out in my little front i was going to take a bunch of bullshit out to the compound right I'm like, no. You only I'm, made it as far as the front yard? I'm like, I pushed it all out of my front yard. I was hosing off my front porch because I'm redoing it. Right. I put a pie plate on it right. for sale. For sale. And I sold all my shit. But at one point, Peggy came out and she was yeah. like, Are you, you practicing? Do you have a for sale sign on a purple pie plate? And I'm like, Hell yeah, Mid Ohio Rules. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mid Ohio Rules is generally you take a paper plate or some other device and you tape it to your headlight with the price you're asking, usually inflated by about 50%. And phone number. Oh. And a phone number if you're smart so people can hunt you down later. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it is hilarious that at Mid Ohio, we tried the one year, we tried to play it really straight. We were like, okay, if the fucking plate on the front handlebars of the bike says $700, the bike is $700. Mm-hmm. We're making it easy for the stupid people. Doesn't work. And it doesn't work. No, we had people arguing with us. Look, if you write 700 on the pie plate, that means you're going to take 400. <laughs> really? Yeah. I didn't read the rules. I'm sorry. I was not well, aware of the bike. And that's a good was. point, too. So yeah. when you see a bike, except yeah. for the one Japanese guy that brings all the amazing yes. stuff because yeah. his prices are pretty legit. But anybody else, if it says $800, offer 300 to start with. <laughs> and then well, wait, 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 wait. Dude, that's our rule. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Trying to help Shh. people. Insider info. He doesn't man. know about the Larry Newberry law. Shh. Fucking hell, man. So yeah. Trying yeah. to help. Well, you're trying to help. There's only three people listening. I guess you don't want to buy anything. Yeah, I know. All yeah, right. That's it. Yeah. That's great. Hey, Phil, okay, bug. You remember that bike you were just looking at? Oh, yeah. I was looking at that bike. Yeah. Well, I went over there and offered the guy $10 more than you were offering, and he sold it to me. You're not my friend anymore. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. What the hell? Don't come over and tell me how you just fucked up my deal. I was playing a long game, dickhead. No, you just you know what you got to do is you bring you beers and then you go spend way too much money on bikes. Also happens. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Also been known to happen. Also, Mid Ohio bring women. Uh, lots of women. There's usually lots of women there. I'm gonna say. Be- I gotta tell. Do you have to tell your friends, your 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 ladies who are friends? You have friends who are ladies. You know, I've always told them, I don't know why they're not coming to Mid-Ohio, because the odds are good, Mm -hmm. but the goods are odd. (laughs) It's just one of those weird scenes, man. It's like... Why wouldn't you want to be in a a field, some thousands of acres, with nothing but men? And we have money. The constant smell of clots just floating through there. Oh, man. (laughs) Rancid fuel. Yes, exactly. Oh, (laughs) Oh, there's no man there whose hands don't smell like gasoline. No. These guys guys were performing a surgery on a scooter carburetor. Oh, yeah. In the heat of the day. The abject dog balls heat of the day. And it was just like, we have to make it run. 
And they did make it run. Yes, they fucking did. They ran the shit out of that but, bike. But, but but here's the interesting thing. So yeah. on, a, on a normal day around here, yeah. everybody would be pissed off and working yeah. on the scooter, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. At Mid-Ohio, no. John's working on the scooter that he hates, but yeah. he's also dancing to the Big yeah. Dick song while he's doing it. I, I like the little gift yeah. that you My made dick is big. Yeah. It's, it's big. big. It's very, very yeah. big. It's like the fucking <laughs> gift is so good. It's, it's, like the, it's <laughs> the weirdest place in the world. And by the day three of Mid-Ohio, by day three, it will have worked. By day three, your brain will have been changed so that you'll be like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't. The Trail worm Ma- has turned for you. Trail my 9 friend. is kind of a sexy bike. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's mid Ohio fast. Dude, did you see that SL70? Yeah. yeah. I saw or, the way she was looking at you. What dude. about what about like the 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 three wheel lawnmower, like the thing that Bruce bought? It's not cool anywhere else in the oh, world. Oh, no, the cent- the Rupp Centaur or any of those other three-wheel uh, travesties yeah. of the 70s. Yeah, but there, Anything with a solid rear axle. Mm. Yeah. I thought but, you were talking about the booby bouncer. Oh, the oh, booby yeah, bouncer yeah, yeah, was we, great. Yeah, yeah. But, but the whole cool. thing, it is just, it is a place where... It didn't survive the move. No, it is a place <laughs> where people go, mostly men, uh, go to commune with small machines and motorcycles of any ilk, and it's true. And if you have a super sweet... A vintage bike. Right. Prepare to talk to nine thousand old men. Yeah, that's true. Even more so than yeah. like general. Like it's yeah. Just, but I mean, that's what you're going there for. Yeah. So it's fine. Yeah. What I would say is, if you're bringing out like a, if you're going to bring out like a CBX, mm-hmm. or if you're going to bring out like a an RZ five hundred, or maybe an RG five hundred gamma, and you're going to bring oh. those out, what I would recommend is making a little sheet. You know, a talking sheet is what we call it. Put the details on the bike right there. All the details, like you know, it's VIN how many miles are on it, et cetera. <laughs> like what, what type of restoration it is. All the questions that a person might ask if they were pretending to buy your bike. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. And have all that information on there, right? And then at the bottom, have a price that says like, you know, $12,000. Right. But if I don't have to load it onto my trailer and take it home on Sunday, I'll take 10 Right. So now you've already implied the negotiations. You've already saved them a step. Because you, you know what they're saying is they're like, Vern, we're going to come back on Sunday. I'm going to get that bitch for $10,000. Well, you just had them off at the pass. Yep. Right. And then do that. Put your phone number on and walk the fuck away. Right. And then say text only on the thing. Because otherwise, your phone's never going to stop ringing. Do you remember when you had the high ace and you were driving it around Mm -hmm. and that guy chased us down for like 10 minutes? Do you remember that five minutes before he chased us, what did I tell you? That guy's going to chase us. Yep. (laughs) Yep. That's it. I saw him. He had the look. We came around the corner. (laughs) We're plodding through the mud at two miles an hour. And I looked up and I saw that guy and I was like, he's going to do a double take. Then we're going to go past him. He's going to put his hand on his jaw. He's going to think for five or six seconds to try to come up with interest, something interesting to say. Then he's going to chase us down and want to talk to us about this car. And it was like I had programmed him. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then you were like, you're like, he's going to be so into it. He's going yep. to ask for my number. And then yep. I tell him the price. And yep. then he's going to go away. Yep. All those things <laughs> it happened. Did happen. <laughs> yep, it did. So if you do have a really sexy, cool bike, that's cool. What I recommend is put it somewhere you aren't. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> if it's where you are. Then you're fucked. Yeah. But it's better to put it away. And also, if you're going there to buy, uh, let's say you're going there to buy uh, Honda Elsinores. Mm-hmm. Don't wear a Honda Elsinore t-shirt. No. <laughs> oh. Right? Yeah. Club of America president. Right. Exactly. 72 years. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to really find a nice Penton while I'm out there. I'm going to find a good Penton. I'm through the year. I'm going to buy a Penton. So I'm going to put on my Penton hat, my Penton suspenders, and my Penton shirt, and my <laughs> Penton shit. Right? At, yeah, I'm gonna have at work, we have... Um, Put on my high point boots. Yeah. Contest to see how much stuff we can stack on Steve while he's sleeping. I'm sure it's a lot of stuff. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, that, 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 yeah, or if, I mean, I'd say just go oh. for the yeah. Oh. yeah, there's too much distraction right now. So the uh, <laughs> he doesn't I'll, know where he is. In the interest I'll of, do some prepping. Yeah, yeah. he's gonna get okay. get your Legos ready. The uh, <laughs> <laughs> get them all stacked and sorted yeah. by brick brick size. This is a four by two, and set them all up. But so okay, that's the Mid Ohio. That's the synopsis. That's what you should do for Mid Ohio. Just just to be aware of it. So that's cool. cool. Um, we did have a DGR. I, I we didn't talk about it. DGR was fun. We had a good time. 
Go yeah. watch the video. Go watch the video. Yeah. The fucking video, Steve. <laughs> The fucking video. The video that you produced in less than 12 hours. Yeah, that was not a nice night. <laughs> <laughs> I got into it. I'm like, I'm going to start this. And then right. it started going pretty well. And then you burnt the fucker down, didn't you? And then it was like 4.45 a.m. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm finishing this fucking thing. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I got I to gotta go to work in two hours. Oh, my God. But uh, it's done. The fucking video is amazing. Is it, was it was fun. very good. I wasn't able to make it. And it was nice to be able to watch it and see the whole thing. Uh, a lot of people like, felt yeah. the same way because... One, how the hell did we go from whatever number of people we had registered to the number of people that showed up? There was tag along. Boy, my God, that fucking, there was some stretch in that fucking ride. And, and there's some dudes that like apparently only pulled their motorcycle out to ride the DGR. Yep. There was a dude that pulled up and I think it was a 360 or a 350. I yeah. don't know. CB. But everything was squeaking, rubbing, yeah. crashing. It was, <laughs> I don't know how it even made the ride, man. It was amazing. Yeah. Well, you know, it's the first ride ever in the history of our DGR where we didn't have to use the breakdown truck. Huh? So the breakdown truck came back empty. There was nothing on the breakdown truck, which is Excellent. pretty fucking great. Um, it was a really short ride. So, um, so, you know, keep your eyes on this space for the future events that we'll be doing, which might be called the disgruntled gentleman's ride or something. That I, was it, funny. Yeah. There, mm-hmm. th- that might happen probably guaranteed. That was pretty uh, funny. Yeah. So we're going to do something a little different. You know, there are rules to the DGR mm-hmm. and I don't like rules. Yep. So rules suck. <laughs> rules take the fun out of situations. Yep. And there were too many rules this year, way too many rules. So we, we decided that we like things a little less rules. You know, it's more fun that way. But yeah, it was a good, good event. And so, yeah, we'll put a link up to the video because the video came out great. And what the fuck was with that Russian guy giving everybody a hard time waving that gun around? <laughs> that was crazy. That fucking guy shows up. <laughs> Dude shows up straight out to fucking, ro- fucking mafia. Yeah. Like the guy was a legit weirdo fucking Russian yeah, that, yeah. It, Tattoos on his neck, his face, everywhere, everywhere. And then with the gun out for no good reason ever, threatening some English chap, the little British yeah, dude. Yeah. And we were like, okay, DGR, that's great. Everybody's got a bowler cap and shit. And then we find out this guy's like a legit British guy mm-hmm. who's in like living in Cleveland now. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Straight <laughs> yeah, up. If nothing else, that's where it's in the video. Yeah. Um, you know, Did the ride stores. on a on a, a Triumph bathtub? You know, like mm-hmm. a super rare Triumph motorcycle. And the whole thing, you know, the Thunderbird, hat, Derby Cat, no bathtub. You know, bathtub's the the three TA. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, and and super guy just minding his own business, mm-hmm. but apparently gets in a scuffle with this Russian guy. Yep. And next <laughs> thing you know, it's what was his name? Vlad, right? Uh, Vlad? No, ah, I can't. Fuck. I can't remember. I thought it was Dimitri, but I wasn't sure anyway. Dimitri Vlad. But know. honestly, I don't think that was his real name. He scared me though, because when I was scary as him, fuck. I said, "Hey, I go. Uh, how long are you here?" He goes, "As long as I want. I'm a criminal." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling he did not have any of the correct papers. No, no not no, at no. all. No. Um, I do want to take one second to compliment Steve on, you know, last week we announced that you got the amazing Kawasaki. Yeah. The, I mean, the fucking. It's ca- a little smaller than yeah, I. It's yeah. Apparently, he washed it in the hot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. You don't tumble dry it. Right. So now a week <laughs> into the bike, is it still everything you'd hoped for it to be? Yeah. And yeah. then, um, you know, I joined all the forums and learned some tricks and tips and okay. stuff. And, and uh, so I might get the ECU flash because like it apparently they they really they really did something. So when you roll off the throttle, it's not as quite snatchy. OK. But besides that, holy fuck, is that bike fun? <laughs> and it's way more comfortable than I ever thought it was going to be. Yes. I give um, it three stars. Three stars. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I I'm in love, man. It's it, it it's everything I wanted in a yeah. bike. I can't wait to go to the five 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 on it. I it's, did bring it up, and I let you snag it. It's a very very wild. So here's the crazy thing about that bike is they've been building that motorcycle for forty odd years, right? So they've been building some iteration of that bike for a very very long time, and it is so much better at being what its spirit wants to be than the CB1100 was. Mm -hmm. Like the CB1100, we all rode it. Mm -hmm. The CB1100 was very smooth. It was very predictable. It was very, it was very like, oh, this is what I was meant to do. I'm a Honda. Therefore, I'm, I'm like carved out of one solid block of, you know, Hondonium. Mm -hmm. Like there was no, there was no part of that bike that was not thought out. Like the, the kickstand pivot was like a 26 person operation figuring out the perfect kickstand pivot for the CB 1100. That bike is a fucking jewel. Yeah, okay. Cool. But this bike is better in every measurable way in right. it's 200 cc's less motor, right? but it's 1000 cc's more fun. I suspect it's doing what Kawasaki has done yeah. uh, through the entire, for the last 50 years. Yeah. 
is it's ne- they always used to joke yeah. that a Kawasaki tested their bikes on a runway. <laughs> They had a runway, <laughs> and they tested them in a straight line, <laughs> and they would make them go as fast as they possibly but could. But it turns. It turns like when you yeah. breathe in it. But turns. now modern technology yeah. has yeah. caught up, but they've yeah. kept that. Like they've Kawasaki kept the mode. A ka- a Kawasaki always has a lumpier cam. Yeah. yeah. It's always going to be a little bit more, uh, like, snatchier in the yeah. lower gears. Mm-hmm. You'll have a little bit of rattle. It'll go, da, 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 da. If yeah. you, you can't bog yeah. it. But when it lights up, yeah. Yeah. it's a Kawasaki. I, I it's going to light up. I was impressed as shit with that bike. And did you hit the, um, I, I think you left in the one mode. So the mode that was in, it lets you wheelie about yep. three inches. Three inches. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. literally, it literally has this much wheelie. And then it so just kind of keeps you from going. It literally just You can shut it itself. off if yeah. you want, but yeah. if not, yeah. it, it's out. So it has ABS. Yeah. So it has different modes. Traction, Traction control. control. Yeah. yeah. And all that stuff. Yeah. It's a modern motorcycle. It's, it's everything you'd ever want. And crazy enough, the stupid little, not stupid. I like it a lot. The, the cafe ferry yeah. on the highway. I had yeah. nothing. Totally functional. Like. Like yeah. nothing. Like yeah. I'm like sev- like I mean, well, seventy five around yeah. eighty miles an hour. You're just yeah, nothing. No, it's a brilliant bike. Yeah, yeah. I gotta say, that's one of those ones that uh, it is just ripe to be bought cheaply. Yeah, you you bought you nailed it. You yeah, Steve it wants good. to know if it ha- can have less horsepower and get way better fuel. Economy. <laughs> <laughs> it probably can. If we can knock the horsepower down to about forty and get the the economy up to about a hundred, right. yeah. Right. But here, here's a tip that yeah. it, it only took me 50 years to learn. Yeah. So I think we discussed this, but, you know, I always bought these cheap fucking straps. Yes. I finally bought really good straps. Yeah, all right. And so I, I had to go way past Kalamazoo to pick the bike up. And if anybody's ever traveled to Michigan, yeah. their highways are whoop tracks. Well, They're yeah. Literally, yeah. like your car goes yeah. up, your trailer goes down. Your trailer goes up, your car goes down. And it's fucking crazy. Yeah. And uh, the good strap, I didn't even have to tighten them once. Yeah. Nothing happened. It's yeah. like. Good straps is good money. And like, you know, you think about it. It's like, okay, the bad straps were 20 bucks. Yeah. The good straps were 40. Right. And I'm, I'm carrying around a $7,000 bike. Bingo. You know, yeah. like. That's it. Yeah. I finally learned my lesson. Story of my life, man. I watch people every day tie bikes in with really garbage straps, and we collect the cam straps that we get from the packaging from all the all the motorcycles we buy, and so we get all these, and we have no joke, hundreds of them, and they are better. These are disposable things that they put in the crating material. They are a hundred times better than anything I see my customers roll in with. So I'm always like, here, when you leave, now that I've, you know, because I'll usually tie their bikes in for them and show them the right way to tie a bike You mean in. you don't have that, like, bucket of bail, bailing uh, wire? No. Nope. Oh, no. Like they have at Home Depot right. when you yeah. want to just... Yeah, yeah, just the polypropylene rope. Use some rope that was yeah. made out of straw. Yep. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> yeah. What the greatest straps, though, we used to joke all the time that Moto Guzzi had the best straps in the industry you know, I used to work for Harley Davidson and Harley Davidson straps that would come in on the bikes were really, really good quality straps. They have to. The bikes weighed 10, 46. Exactly. Miles. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so the Harley straps used to be prized and to getting Harley straps that was like, yeah, these are really good straps. And then we met the Moto Guzzi straps and we were like, these are really good straps. And they come all the way from Italy and they hold in 1400 CC motorcycles. But to date, there is nothing better on the planet than zero straps. Zero straps are made in America, first things first. They have a hook on one end, as you'd expect, but on the other end, they just have a loop. So you loop it over something and onto itself, which prevents you from a lot of the mistakes a lot of people make when tying something in, which is forgetting that when a trailer does this coming out of driveway and it wobbles left and right, the bike can move left and right on its suspension and the hook can fall out. Mm-hmm. Right. So many times when a bike is smashed on the ground, you'll see the tie down strap is still perfectly secured to itself. And it's not secured to what the, the hole it used to go through anymore. Right? Right, right. And so zero says, fuck that. So they, the one side of the strap literally is just a loop. You loop it through itself. It's Strang- built in soft strangles, strangles itself. Exactly. Cannot make any fucking mistakes. And on the other end, they got this giant, big, super thick rubberized hook. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Fucking love that shit. Zero tie down straps are the bomb and we save them. And that's like, if we really like you and we're tying your bike in, we'll give you zero straps. You know, otherwise you're going to get the takeoff ones from the Moto Guzzi's and whatever, whatever else we have. But those are good too. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but yeah, there's like, I did learn a lot of people don't know how to tie bikes down. Nope. And, yeah. and, and every time on, on all these websites, Facebook and everything, yeah. People are saying, hey, I got my new bike, and I see those orange fucking Harbor Freight straps. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do it. Uh, no. No. Okay, I'll, I'll upgrade it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing with the well, ratchet. If you got a 100cc bike, fine. But the, if you're carrying some weight, dude, no. The thing with the Harbor Freight ratchet straps is um, 
they should be called rat shit straps, like rat <laughs> shit, you know, because the plates, the metal plates in oh, them, they're fucking, you could bend them with your fingers. Yeah. And that's supposed to be a ratchet. You can fuck you, man. I could literally bend it with my fingers. Those I have are an the, older set when they still made them good. When they were good. Okay, yeah, because the new Vintage ones, Harbor Freight. Yeah, they're made out of recycled tinfoil. Like, yeah. they really they're are. They're really right? bad now. It's, yeah. They've gotten pretty pretty, ra- pretty raunchy. So, so, Steve and I had an interesting shootout today. Oh, tell me more. Would you like to tell them about it, Steve? No. <laughs> Grumpy sir guy, gentlemen. Oh, he'll be here all week. Yeah, our shootout was the SSR 125 against a 1986 XR80. Oh, oh, R, R. Wow, a 1986 with operating suspension and everything. Mm-hmm. Wow. 1986 with Man. four to one compression, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, we made a what would some would consider a monumental mistake. We cleaned the car, we cleaned the tank, we cleaned everything. Right. We didn't clean the air box. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Oh, oh, so you mean it was uh, governed? Did, it eventually. was governed. Yeah. We did. Eventually. eventually. Okay. All right. Allegedly. 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 <laughs> so, how many ostriches were in there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, quite a bit, as it appears. It turns out. Uh, so let's take a look at the, the victim in question. It's Did a, it still have the blue seat? Yes. Wow. Blue and orange. Yeah, blue and Side orange. Side panel still on it? Yes. Wow. Yeah, that was from Impressive. that period of time when Honda Dang. thought orange was going to be their thing, man. Look you know? at the suspension. Mon- oh, yeah. Mono yeah. shock. Mono shock. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on. The tail of the tape right there. You know, the XR80. Little brother to the the venerable fam- world famous XR100. Yeah. Can't really go wrong there, right? Did they have the same size front front and back wheels? Same no. size? No, I don't like think so. Looks like it on so. that one really? picture, doesn't it? Yeah, I seem to remember that they weren't, but yeah, I mean. We're not going to, okay, so first of all, let's just get this out in the open. Okay. The SSR, horsepower-wise, 125 over the 80. Yeah. No no comparison. Right. And okay. the way that stuck in lug is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I, I made the mistake. I started, I kick-started the SSR the other day or whatever, and somehow I accidentally popped it into gear while it was on the, the, the oh. side stand, yeah. and I was I was holding on to it, thankfully. Okay, all right. And the back wheel just started going... Oh, you went into first gear on that. It was sitting in first gear on the kickstand. So it was just idling? It was just going... Oh, my God. you're saying is Steve wrote it till his whole garden just holding the SSR. You could easily do that. The SSR has some power, torque, everything. The motor is fantastic. Amazing. Fantastic. But that's the only thing that that really had Okay. on that XR180. Right. Or the XR80. XR80. Right. I mean, the seat on the XR80. It is goes all the way back. All the way back. Yeah, it's a two-passenger seat. Yep. The wheels are bigger. Yep. The, the suspension yep. is cushier. And yep. it's like, wow, that Honda really was doing something back in 86 well, when they built that little XR80. And I'll be the first one to tell you that I'm going to say the biggest difference, and, and this is an unqualified statement about the XR180, or the XR80, is the suspension on those when they were new was garbage, meaning it was just way too soft. And that is something I will tell you about the SSRs, is they're not soft. There's no. nothing soft about the, the SSR suspension. The SR, SSR suspension is a very good toit suspension. Well, but yeah. when you do real world riding, <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. side by side, you jump, yep. off, you jump off the SSR and you jump on... A clapped out XR80. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the, so much more comfortable. Yeah, the SSR it's so much less jarring. It's I think so it has a lot to do with that seat, though, because that seat yeah. is comfortable. The, the seat is the a giant loaf no, of bread. Yeah. It yeah. has everything to do with everything else. Yeah. <laughs> the, the SSR runs and, a tw- twelve in the back and a but, fourteen in the front. I mean, the SSR. You know, maybe you can do a jump. Maybe a three. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? But yeah. the, it's so much more stiff. Oh yeah. Than a you know and. Yeah. A, Maybe once they're clapped out. Yeah, maybe once they're worn out. Maybe we just yeah. have to beat the just shit out of them a little bit. But yeah. well, I, I mean, I, just riding around, you feel every oh, yeah. bump. No, you feel every bump. Yeah, well, exactly. I have a feeling that like with our weight. Yeah, we're, we're definitely we're taking for every like year it would take a kid. Yep. we're like every two months. Yeah, we yeah exactly. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna balance that right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. The uh, one of our friends, John Delecchio, who does the cornering confidence, and you know we've all learned more about trail breaking from John. He was uh, talking to us about doing a fleet of SSR 125s mm. with street tires on them. 
Ooh. to teach a motorcycle braking class. The suspension on the street oh. would be good because it's it's firm. It's like firm, that firm yeah. suspension. Oh, with, and you know how yeah. fun those would be on a go-kart track? Super duper fun. Yeah, man. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I looked up some good tires for them today and figured that out because the SSR has got a 12 on the back and a 14 on the front. The XR has got a 14 on the back and a 16 on the front. It makes a big difference. Well, yeah, two inches. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Two inches. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's it. Makes all the difference in the goddamn world. Uh, but yeah, the, the XR weighs about 30 pounds, 40 pounds more than the SSR. So a much heavier bike. And the, uh, but yeah, I spent a lot, a lot of time with XR 100s and XR 80s. And the XR 80, it was just, it was just guaranteed that you, if you jumped anything bigger than a foot, you were going to eat all the suspension. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, anything bigger than a foot, and there's nothing left. And meanwhile, I was landing that SSR off of our not a ramp, not a <laughs> jump, and I never got to the bottom of the suspension. So You would not yeah. bottom out an SSR. No. I don't yeah. bottom out an SSR. It's insane. Yeah, yeah, it's a crazy thing that those those things can be built that strong. It's kind of shocking, but yeah, it's crazy. But the seat is hard as but the seat needs another seat put on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. I'm bringing my my uh, cutlet. Yes, you're gonna thing. bring your your yeah. veal cutlet, yeah. your your uh, spanko gel cutlet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that was. I saw somebody was tearing up their carpet from their house the other day, uh, and I was like, "Oh, why don't I just stop and get all that?" Because we could do like nine layers yep. of carpet pad and a little vinyl yep. over it. Yep, exactly, and be mother beautiful. So that's <laughs> all good. Anybody got anything else? No. Uh, that's it. Hey, did you want to tell everybody we got 50 episodes of Moto Stories? No, yeah, Damn. we hit our 50th episode. Fucking man. A. And these last ones with Mecklefresh, oh. like yeah. te- tech guru Mecklefresh. Yeah, yeah. They've okay. actually been, you guys, so the, the session before this one, yeah. before Oscar, so right. before Oscar, yeah. that was like funny, funny, ha-ha, hammered, hammered, good stories, awesome content, right. whatever. Yeah. These last ones have been really funny, good content, but holy fuck, like actually like educational. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> is this for both of them? Or is it I don't one? know. It's not mine. It's probably his. Serendipity. <coughs> but anyways, it's if you haven't, yeah. check it out. Man. Check it out. These yeah. guys. These, like, I'm telling you, these videos, these last ones that John helped out with, we talk about literally the, the curse of a free yeah. motorcycle. Yeah. Right? The curse of a free motorcycle. And I love the way that on Facebook it brought all my nerdy friends out. Oh, yeah. To just <laughs> be like, you ain't lying. Like, yeah, yeah no shit. And I like the comments, too, because some guys were like, oh, I was ready to fucking rip into you guys, yep. but you were right. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we didn't get this way. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get this fucking manicure yeah. from, uh, you know, from working an office job. Yeah, no shit. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's it. I just thought, but I still, I mean, the editing, the, what you do with it and everything, oh, and the little so pop-ups yeah. here and stuff yeah. like that. It's, it's really like, You didn't see, did you see today's? Oh, I don't know. The seal? No, I, I saw the seal. Oh, I saw the That's seal. what I was saying about the seal. I was like, yeah. Yeah. Right. This, There's, we have had to work on an you insane. You understand, I just cracked myself yeah. up. Oh, oh yeah. Like, <laughs> well, I, we had a, I had to watch a, mo- a movie wow. today at work with a that. gerbil crawling through some dude's intestine. What? <laughs> the fuck <laughs> are what you, are you talking, talking about? It was a South Park episode. What are you guys doing? Oh, okay. Right. Right. So yeah, wait, so right, wait, so wait. Right. They go to work. I thought it was a training video. I legit right. figured right. they're, they're in the wastewater back. industry. Really? Yeah. Yeah. They have to learn about stuff getting yeah. caught in the right. pipes. So they got to so watch a video about a gerbil crawling through a dude's intestine. I didn't know. Oh, I don't want to call these guys out. But but okay, so we heard about their work the last two days. They've gone to Dairy Whip. They've raced motor Dairy Twist. Dairy Twist. Dairy twist. Dairy twist. They, they, uh, they, With a twist. Two they, snaps they, and a they twist. They washed CB550s or whatever the fuck that thing is. Oh, my God. They ate. They Purple watched rain. a movie with a, uh, a gerbil in somebody's ass. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Was there any uh, sewer water work? Mostly we just took naps. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> No. Because you know what, Steve? That's a small When you're good at your it. job, the job does itself. That's what I'm hearing. That's right. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. When no, you work at the uh, sewer plant, uh, just go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> and on that, folks, remember to ride fast and take chances. You fucking turd herders. <laughs> 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 <laughs>